That was <laughs> fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> uh, welcome, uh, Ilyana. It's such a pleasure uh, to, to finally be in conversation with you. I know that uh, our very dear friend uh, Tiziana, Dr. Tiziana Lorenzetti, uh, has been trying to get us to, uh, you know, for the seminar with the International Institute of South Asian Studies, uh, also with Rosella, who's spent so many years learning Kathak. And I'm looking forward to our uh, seminar, uh, maybe next, I think next week we are slated. But it is so wonderful. I've, of course, known your work. Um, you know, um, uh, Kelu Charanda uh, and I were uh, quite, uh, I mean, a little close towards the end, uh, to the last years of his uh, uh, yeah. time. And, um, and I, uh, because Maurizia, my wife, being an Italian, so he was very, always very, uh, you know, fond of telling me about the Italian student of his. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, um, uh, welcome to the 148th uh, uh, Mela of the ongoing Yarnad Virtual Betek series. Uh, friends, I'm in uh, conversation and we've seen a fantastic uh, Uthan, as we say, of our conversation, if I may, uh, by Dr. Eliana Chitaristi. Uh, a couple of words about her. Uh, this, as you know, is the uh, series which is dedicated to the 550th birth anniversary of uh, uh, Guru Nanak Dev, who uh, sang his famous Arati in Rag Dhanasari in Jagannath Puri. And uh, uh, when, and, I mean, it's an, he was an extraordinary, extraordinary figure. He is an extraordinary figure in human history, the second most traveled person uh, in human history, as I say. But if you include his journey to the Vatican and Jerusalem and beyond, then he might as well be the most traveled person in human history. And here we are in conversation with another traveler, the one who came the other way, uh, you know, from Italy down to, to Orissa as well. Um, Guru Nanak's Aarti, as you all know, was sung by him in um, opposite, outside the Jagannath Puri temple in Maithili, Gagana Maithal, Ravi Chandi, Pakavanitar, Kamandal Janakamoti. And so on. So I am, you know, very glad that uh, we are in uh, conversation with another traveler. As I said, Ilyana Chitaristi is an Italian born. Odisha dwelling exponent of Odissi dance and Mayur Chao. She holds a doctorate in philosophy for a thesis, psychoanalysis and Eastern mythology. And I'm going to talk to her about that. Uh, in 1979, um, a few ages ago, that is, uh, Ilyana <laughs> came to, to India, uh, came to Indian dance following years in the traditional and experimental uh, theatrical traditions of Europe. Um, another point we're going to be having a conversation with her about her days then and days uh, later as she came to India and about her interests towards Odissi and of course to the Mayuban Chao as I mentioned. She has lived in Odisha ever since. Eliana underwent training in Odissi dance under Kelucharan Mohapatra. Uh, she's also an exponent of Mayuban Chao as I mentioned which she studied under uh, the legendary Shri Harinayak. Chitaristi is certified as an Acharya in this art from the Sangeet Mahavidyalaya of Bhuvaneshwar. Uh, it will be fun to call her Acharya Ilyana Chitaristi. Wouldn't that be fun? And it would be only appropriate. Uh, she has performed, uh, taught, written and contributed to documentaries on these dance forms across India, as well as at uh, major dance festivals in Italy, Argentina, Poland, France, Germany, Holland, Denmark, Hong Kong, Japan, USA, Australia, Israel, the Moon, the Mars, the Jupiter. I'm kidding. <laughs> of course, the stars have all to be in, in coincidence before we have something marvelous happening out here, as I say. So no wonder she's gotten some fantastic constellation of stars looking over her. Uh, she has several innovative dance uh, choreography productions at her credit, both in Odissi and Chao, including Echo and Narcissus. Uh, my, I, I think uh, we'll have a little 
little snippet that uh, uh, you know Eliana has dug out from our archives, and I'll be very glad to show when, when at her command, of course. Uh, then we she's worked with Maya Darpan and Akshara. Among the books she has authored are the Making of a Guru, uh, which again is a matter of particular interest as a series as. All the listeners of the and followers of the Yaranath Virtual Barak series know that I started these series of conversations rather than just a mere performance. As everyone with a smartphone had become a television station or a radio station with podcast, which is important. They're all doing great service. They're they're catering to their own. Uh, everyone is uh, you know uh, helping out their own little worlds. Like I am, uh, but my um, interest was in the process of becoming a vidyadha. A bearer of knowledge. What does it take to become a bearer of knowledge, and what does it take? I mean, it takes several great knowledge bearers to produce one knowledge bearer at times. So the process of becoming a vidwan, and look at her book, the making of a guru, or oh, and it was on the life of a teacher, of Horisi Dance and her autobiography, uh, which is uh, my journey, a tale of two birds. No wonder. In 1995, she founded Art Vision, through which she has organized events, including a festival of martial dance. Um, at Art Vision, Chetarasi trains local and visiting students of dance, um, hosts performances of folk theater, a top grade artist of Doordarshan, and am paneled as an outstanding artist of ICCR, which is the Indian Council for Cultural Relations. Chitharisti is the recipient of numerous awards and titles, including Leonid Massine for the Art of Dance, the Order of the Star of Italian Solidarity from President of Italy, and the Padma Shri from the President of India. Dosto, Mitro Te Mere Jani Dushmano, Darindo Parindo, Puto Preto, Ji Ayanu, A Ek Short Talimi Baitak Hai, Mai Swele Hamvartak Hai Gaan, डॉक्टर एलियाना चित्रिस्ती होना देनाल जेडे के इटली दे जन में बड़े बड़े सियासत दान दी सुपुत्री हन के ते ओड़ा नू जड़ा एक्सपेर जड़ा ट्रेडिशनल ते एक्सपेरिमेंटल थिएटर सी यूरोप दा ओ तो चार चढ़े आ उड़ीसी डांस दा ते मायूरबंद शाओ डांस दा जो के गत के वांगु यानी के मार्शल ट्रेडिशंस जड़ियाँ हैं यहाँ उधे नाल संबंध रखता है उधे एक वन की भी पुरानी रिकॉर्डिंग में ना नू बिल्ली की तीसरी जड़ी ना ने कड़ी है वो आप आ देखांगे उधे चलकी देखांगे डॉक्टर इलियाना चित्रिस्ती ने आपने पीएचडी की थी साइको एनालिसिस ते ईस्टर्न मेथोलॉजी दे उते जड़ा � in 1989, Hindustan came to us and came to us and came to us. They were not the only ones who were born. They were born in our country. 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 इहे आचार्य दी उपाधि प्राप्त हन के संगीत महाविद्यालय जड़ा भुवनेश्वर है उत्तों इनाने रित कीता है इनाने सिखाया है इनाने लिखया है इनाने डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज बनाईया ने डांस फॉर्म्स दे उत्ते पूरे हिंदुस्तान दे जेनु कहने कोने कोने दा इनाने निरीक्षण परीक्षण की तैयार छाने आ उन्हों पर ख ते वड्डे जेडे डांस फेस्टिवल्स ने दुनिया पर दे विच मैं कई देशां दे नाल है चुकाम उना सारे आंधे विच ना ने परफॉर्म की ता है क्या इना ने डांस कोरियोग्राफी प्रोडक्शंस भी इना दे इना दे इना ने की तियां हन किया ओडिसी दे विच भी ते छाओ दे विच भी जेदे विच एको एंड नार्सिसिस है किया नार्सिस ओदी भी वीडियो एक चलकी है ना ने बड़ी मेहर करके सानू साढ़े नाल सांझी की थी है सानू और तो आनू तो खान के मैं देख चुके हैं काबिले गौर अंगियां माया दर्पण ते अक्षर ए होर ओना दिया जड़ियां प्रोडक्शन संधियां 
ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਲਿਖੀਆਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਚ ਦੋ ਖਾਸ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਮੇਕਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਅ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੁਰੂ ਬਣਦਾ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਔਰ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਆਪਣੇ ਉਸਤਾਦ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਹੈ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਕੇਲੂਚਰ ਮਾਤਰ ਮਹਾਪਾਤਰ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਔਰ ਦੂਜੀ ਹੈ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਆਟੋਬਾਇਓਗ੍ਰਾਫੀ ਉਹਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੀ ਜੀਵਨ ਗਾਥਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਦੋ ਜਨਮਾਂ ਦੀ 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 ਕਹਾਣੀ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਜੇ ਸਰਲ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਹੀਏ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਉਹਦਾ ਤਰਜਮਾ ਕਰ ਸਕਾ 1995 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਰਟ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਸਥਾਪਿਤ ਕੀਤਾ ਔਰ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਰਾਹੀਂ ਮਾਧਿਅਮ ਰਾਹੀਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ अनेक ਫੈਸਟੀਵਲਸ ਕੀਤੇ ਨੇ ਮਾਰਸ਼ਲ ਡਾਂਸ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ ਜੁਝਾਰੂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨ੍ਰਿਤ ਹਨਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਇਹ ਕਾਬਲ ਗੌਰ ਹੈ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਗੱਤਕੇ ਦਾ ਸ਼ੌਂਕ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਖਾਸ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕੰਟਰੀਬਿਊਸ਼ਨ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਾਏਗੀ ਆਰਟ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਤੇ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਆਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਲੋਕਲ ਉੜੀਸਾ ਤੋਂ ਵੀ ਤੇ ਬਾਹਰੋਂ ਵੀ ਦੂਰੋਂ ਦਰਾਡਿਓ ਅਨੇਕ ਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਫਿਰ ਇਹ ਫੋਕ ਥੀਏਟਰ ਦੀਆਂ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਪਰਫਾਰਮੈਂਸਸ ਵੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਸਿਖਾਉਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਟੌਪ ਗ੍ਰੇਡ ਆਰਟਿਸਟ ਨੇ ਆਪ ਦੂਰਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਔਰ ਆਊਟਸਟੈਂਡਿੰਗ ਆਰਟਿਸਟ ਵਜੋਂ ਆਈਸੀਸੀਆਰ ਨਾਲ ਪੈਨਲ ਵੀ ਹਨਗੇ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਅਨੇਕ ਅਵਾਰਡਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਵਾਜਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਲਿਓਨਿਡ ਮੈਸਨ ਫॉर ਦੀ ਆਰਟ ਆਫ ਡਾਂਸ ਹੈਗਾ ਆਰਡਰ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਸਟਾਰ ਆਫ ਇਟਾਲੀਅਨ ਸੋਲਿਡਾਰਿਟੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਟਲੀ ਦੇ ਰਾਸ਼ਟਰਪਤੀ ਦੇ ਕਰ ਕਮਲਾ ਤੋਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਿਆ ਔਰ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਰਾਸ਼ਟਰਪਤੀ ਦੇ ਕੋਲੋਂ ਇਹ ਨਵਾਜੇ ਗਏ ਹਨ ਕਿ ਪਦਮ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਸਨਮਾਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੇ ਆਓ ਆਪਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰੀਏ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਇਲਿਆਨਾ ਚਤਰਿਸਤੀ ਹੋਣਾ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ so my apologies for a little longish but well, it's not long we have time isn't it we have the whole evening to ourselves <laughs> but what a what a fantastic journey compliments at the very onset really compliments to you for i mean it's it takes courage as i mentioned i mean we the sikhs are known to be travelers and wanderers and you know uh, you know people who don't give uh, we are very sovereign we are fe- very federalistic if i may twist the word and we don't care i mean we are our own uh, we bow our head to the creator whoever it is the one who's neither masculine neither uh, feminine neither with a name this neither with a form that so uh, for me we are always enamored with the idea of the courage that is required the sense of awe the sense of curiosity the joy of life that it takes to make one traveler <laughs> so i'm very glad to be in conversation with a fellow traveler and you had a fantastic uh, journey as i said my congratulations to you at the very onset well first of all uh, i would like to compliment you because uh, i think is uh, maybe one of the very few times in all these years that somebody is pronouncing my name properly <laughs> So you think that you are married with an Italian? I am hearing all sorts of pronunciation. Like? Tell us, tell us, what, what do they call you? But uh, it never came natural to anybody. So, so yeah, that this was the right way to, to pronounce it. So, yeah. Yeah, you, I, I used to travel a lot. And uh, now I, I'm feeling very confined as all of us due to the COVID. But uh, even before... Uh, reaching india and before reaching my destination which is india then i started to travel for the performances for uh, uh, but before i used to travel uh, just uh, i i belong to the uh, ep generation so to the uh, student movement of the 60 and 70s the feminism so everything happened during those years when i was in the first year of the colleges Oh we have a few feminists here they'll be very happy Ramanjit who's an actor and theater director we have Sunanda Sharma you know the in the Girija Devi's uh, students so you're going to make the my enemies very happy so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sword male shamanist so I'm going to enjoy my conversation with you I'm kidding <laughs> I'm kidding No no see everything happened at the right moment in life the only thing is that you the, that courage which you talk is just to have a belief in your life i mean to trust your life so just to follow the indication which life gives 
So that is the courage which is required. Then everything will be taken care. So uh, the first time I came to India, it was in uh, before seventy eight. It was in nineteen seventy four by see. then. By hitchhiking. So it took, uh, yeah, with the Orient Express, the famous Orient Express, now they have re, uh, re, remake it, but that time it was really the dangerous one. And um, yeah, then um, to Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and uh, Pakistan, <laughs> Amishtar was the first. Yeah. All of us. First, the first in, darshan of Hindustan was Amishtar. Yeah, that was the landing of all of us. So. So that is in 1974. At that time, my dance was not uh, there. Uh, theater, I was doing theater, but still, uh, it was important at that point of life to experiment and to to try yourself outside your comfort zone. That was the main thing. And and uh, uh, I was already doing theater. I was already I was young, successful, and all these things. But I wanted to uh, put myself uh, uh, really on the road in, uh, to but try this the trip. As it, it was called. So the trip towards the East. The East was something uh, which we were reading in the books by Jack Kirwa, Herman S. So those were the writers who ins were inspiring us. And the East was meaning uh, a discovery of yourself, uh, which was not in a materialistic way, but uh, more spiritual or psychological it depends which lay, 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 which side you, you were uh, more. Uh, Okay. But uh, for me, uh, another, uh, I mean, the, the person who also um, directed me towards this trip, apart from all, all the experience in the young movement, you know, it was also Carl Gustav Jung, the psychoanalyst. I see. Uh, because, uh, uh, he opened me the, uh, the door towards the Eastern uh, thought, the Eastern uh, symbology, the symbols, and how to translate the symbols uh, in. Uh, the, in the terms of archetype, which are common to the entire uh, human race. So, so this archetype is deep in unconscious, which has certain uh, certain uh, symbols like the tr trinity, the quaternity, the circle. There are, there are those symbols which are again those patterns which are again coming in all the civilization, all uh, all the ages, all the cultures. So he had uh, uh, expanded uh, his view very quite. Uh, I mean, that time uh, in the ninth, uh, last century was not so easy because the West was very proud and uh, considering the East uh, inferior in yeah. many ways. Yeah. Whereas Jung uh, opened up that uh, even Freud was not so open to that. In fact, when I wanted to study Eastern philosophy, I went to. The professor in uh, Milano. I was uh, in the faculty of philosophy, so I went there and I said this, and I uh, I had already, uh, still another seven or eight examination to do. So I was telling him uh, I am interested in Eastern philosophy. So how why I couldn't do uh, uh, my last examination in Eastern philosophy instead of uh, he said, but Madam, there is no no philosophy in the East. He said, so can you imagine? <laughs> So I packed my my papers and books and left Milano, Milan, and go to Venice. And in Venice, of course, in Venice it was a little more open the ambience, and there was a faculty of Eastern language uh, where they were teaching already Hindi and Sanskrit, and uh, so and uh, then they, they were a professor on um, on uh, Indian art, professor of yeah. So there I could manage to uh, do my examination, touching the Eastern. So, but uh, that was the situation, uh, and I'm uh, talking about uh, the 70s, early 70s. I see. So, yeah. So but, that, uh, but then, you know, there was a monster at home, isn't it? I mean, uh, it is not just the professor at Milan, but your dad was a politician. He's a founder of a political party. How did you do? I mean, did you need to convince him that I'm going to go to India? <laughs> I'm looking at. I, I didn't convince anybody. I just went. You just they, went. <laughs> I didn't try to convince anybody. I just, I, I just went. No, with my father, it was a continuous uh, fighting. I see, because he would have, he would have obviously wanted you to just pursue him. I mean, follow him 
into yeah. politics and uh, you know not much politics really? but uh, he he was an also a lecturer and he had a publishing oh, i see i see because he was one of the founders of the party i see i see and and it was a so literature a, you were already i mean you were uh, literature was there books were there a, at home was, yeah he was a, a lecturer in italian literature so but um, whenever he was uh, in the democ christian party i was in the communist party so oh, and I I, see. <laughs> and during the occupation in the colleges all the sitting which i had we had in the college i was with the student inside close to the door and he was outside with the authorities <laughs> to convince me <laughs> to, to lead the students out of the place <laughs> So it was always a conflict. So, but, uh, so venturing into the chow dance, you were already a warrior back in Italy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm always half of me is a fighter, of course. That's why uh, the Odyssey and Chow, both of them were required <laughs> because both the energy got channelized yes. in, in this style. Yeah. But that's amazing. I mean, you remind me of I mean, I'm following this. Uh, uh, you know, there's a country called Trumpistan. Uh, you know. and it is a christocracy uh, and uh, 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 and uh, you know the democracy as i call it <laughs> democ democracy but there's uh, rudolf giuliani's daughter has just endorsed uh, joe biden so and this is not the first time she has uh, you know done that she is uh, when her father was running for president she was already endorsing uh, <laughs> oh my god brother so you remind me a recent tale of uh, uh, another another american italian giuliani's yeah. daughter it often uh, happens that that in the same family two had strong uh, personalities <laughs> <laughs> they had to to, to go in parallel direction right so how was that uh, college environment before we come to india uh, theater and uh, you know uh, the italian theater that you were doing and your uh, you know your you as a student activist and a feminist at the time in the 70s tell us about uh, those times uh, how was it like and what lured you into what attracted you to theater if yeah, i have the same breath in this in my uh, quest for uh, independence and a form of expression and something which would be my own uh, way my own uh, choice I happened to enter into the theater. It was I was not very when I uh, for the first time I did an audition for a theater school. I it was my, more uh, for uh, become for again for acquiring more independence from my family. Was it was it like so? My question, in fact, before you continue, if, just to add to my query is that was theater also like something uh, of a statement was it a form of uh, activism for you uh, one you ordered it's more of freedom etc but was it also uh, associated with the feminist movement etc that was happening at the time or was it just pure art attraction towards art and your own uh, fluttering of wings if i may your own independence uh... i mean I, i was trying different ways uh, so theater is one one of that Uh, feminist movement was all the procession we were going on the road the, uh, wearing the mini skirt and uh, and uh, uh, burning the bra and um, all, all these things that was that was another another things and the student movement was occupying the college and fighting for uh, uh, freedom and uh, against the authoritarian authoritarian uh, ways from the lecture from the teachers and from the so all the things were open and then there was also drag uh, not heavy drug but of course a little bit of marijuana and a little bit of uh, all, all these things were also there so it there were different uh, ways to search until until you find your own way right. so theater brought me uh, close to my final destination because uh, uh, first it was a theater which okay it was a conventional theater but already a little bit uh, not so uh, Um, localized only inside the, in the in the theater uh, hall but uh, we were already uh, part of a group which was bringing theater outside in I the see. school uh, so it was already something which was moving out and parallel to that the rotoski uh, theater was also coming to italy and many young people were joining this kind of physical theater which was uh, 
more uh, it was not uh, more much based on the recitation through the words but uh, a work which you do with your whole body entire body which included a lot of physical work acrobatic and all these things also and uh, walking on stilt and uh, uh, street uh, street theater and uh, um, so improvising uh, so it, it was and to it was a, uh, the theater also was a sort of search for yourself and your so, um, so it was a different way of uh, not the director which uh, tells you what to do, but the director who guides you towards a certain way of expression. So it, it was a different uh, relationship also with the director. So, um, so that Jersey Krotowski Theatre, uh, they came to Italy and the directors, a uh, the, the, uh, few of the actors of that group uh, uh, organized workshops, so we took part, we were it was possible to take part, to have those kind of experiences. Then other groups like Bread and Puppet from, uh, from America, they, they were coming and teaching us to make masks and to make to, to the parade on the, on the street. So it was a lot of activities and, um, and one was participating to all those and uh, then trying to uh, do something on your own and um, creating a group and then improvising with them and try to experiment something. So I was in that phase in, in, as far as theater is concerned. And on the other side, I was studying and uh, interested in the philosophy and psychoanalysis. So these two um, parallel uh, things were going on, which were not really much touching each other until I was in Italy. So the theater and expression through the body in one side and the spiritual search the intellectual search on the other. So what happened in India, I think that these two things finally they got together. So through this dance, both the uh, mind and the body got together because this is a kind of dance which is not only physical, but it requires a lot of introspection, a lot of understanding of the different layers of, of uh, the symbology which, are involved, which is involved in the literature, which you are approaching in the philosophical uh, meaning of that. So these two things, they got, they got uh, together. So there is where the things uh, click. But um, of course, uh, that I, I can analyze now, but at that point, it just happened that after all this search, when I finally saw one Katakali performance, and I was uh, in Bergamo, in my own town in Italy, and I was fascinated because I, this is what we were doing, uh, trying to improvise with our, our hands, uh, with our body, on projection, uh, on the tree, on the shouting and uh, with the voice. So all this, I saw his demonstration and he was demonstrating how meticulously each part of the body, each muscle, each movement of the, of the body would have a meaning. And there was a grammar behind that. Everything was very much systematized, systematic. So I was really, it was a revelation. So I had to, uh, after the performance, after I saw this performance, I asked, but how is it possible to learn? Because this is what we are searching desperately. We are searching for a grammar of the body. And then we are just trying to, in many ways, to, to, to improvise without having it. So, so he told me about, uh, yeah, I, many other young people uh, in, the, in the course of this tour uh, asked me the same thing. So I decided to do a workshop in uh, Sri Krishna Puram in Kerala. And uh, there I went, uh, in, uh, that was 78. So that was my second trip to India. Oh, first, 74. 74. Uh, so I went to Kerala directly this time. Uh, and uh, I did for three months the, the Katakali, a very intense experience, very really? cathartic. <laughs> At the end, I even performed with a green uh, patch. Uh, I, I was doing Vinala, the Mayanti really? Do you remember? Do you remember something from that time? <laughs> <laughs> I remember only a few, a few things with the eyebrow and this. Uh, but uh, I, I have not done everything, the, my lines of the of the things, because I'm very, I still have the booklet. I see. And, yeah, I did the Purapadu and a little bit of Nalada Mayanti at the end of the workshop with all village there uh, that okay, assembled and saw, I came to see these three, we were three yeah. Italians to, to perform with all the makeup. <laughs> And, uh, and after that performance, I, I asked him, I said, uh, what, what else? Because uh, now it has been so, such an intense experience, I just can't come, come, I cannot go back like this. 
Mm-hmm. So he told me about the VC. So that. Oh, I, I see. Have. So your journey is from Italy, from theatre, psychoanalysis, <laughs> philosophy, straight to Kathakali in Kerala, and from there you get to hear about Odisha. That's. So, so he told me Odisha. I mean, at that point he could have told me the moon, and I would have gone to the moon for yeah. me. It was the same. <laughs> Orissa, I didn't know anything, but during my exams on Indian art, I remember too that there was some temple which I read about, which was in Orissa, that's all. <laughs> I didn't know anything that at that point. So I crossed the country and came <laughs> to Orissa and he gave me the name of Sanjukta Panigra. So he had met this Sanjukta Sanjunali during one of the, his tour abroad. Uh, the, the Guru, Katakali Guru was Krishna Nambudu. So, so then uh, I went to Sanjunani and uh, uh, I stayed for one month and uh, then I went back to Italy. And I, I included some of these movements of Katakali and Odissi in my theatre work. Oh. So that, that was a, actually the purpose, the original purpose I thought. Was, I see, to expand the horizon and bring in, I see, I see, that, that makes was, sense. Then what happened uh, after six months? I uh, I thought here if I really want to, risk, uh, I mean include and expand my vocabulary, I, I need to learn a little more. It was not enough. So I planned to come for one year in 79, uh, June 79, and I planned to, to stay six months in Orissa and six months in Kerala and to go back. So this time I came to Orissa and. Uh, I didn't go to Sajuta Panigrai, but I had, uh, the year before, somebody had given me the name of the Luchara Mohapatra. I, I had a small paper <laughs> with written this name. And so I went straight to him and I told him that time I was very different from now with the, I mean, my EP type of uh, appearance. And uh, I went to him and I, I told him I'd say I'll be here for six months. So for six years I never went back to Italy. From 79 to 85 I never went back to Italy. It, really? It, 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 everything disappeared. Kerala, theater, Italy, Katakali and only how to reach Guruji's house <laughs> every day in Katakali. I see. So from my, but when I came in 79 I had very little luggage because I was still a traveler uh, with the uh, yeah. So I had a book which Ovid Metamorphosis, which had this Greek uh, myth of equal narcissus, which I thought I would be, I wanted to do it in as a theatre form. So that's why I thought uh, I would go to Orissa, learn a little more of movements than in Kerala, and then I go back and uh, do this uh, direct display. This was the play. So this didn't happen. I never went back. But in 1985, after six years, 84, yeah, 84, 84, 85, after six years, East, the East, the East West Dance Encounter happened in Bombay. Nice. And uh, for that occasion, the Georg um, Leschner, who was the organizer, told that we had to choreograph something which was out of the box, I mean, not, not the traditional. So at that point, after six years, the Greek myth of Equa Narcissus, mm-hmm. which was supposed to be, at the, I mean, in the plan, where it was supposed to be done in a play in Italy and all this thing, which didn't happen. So this became my first choreographic piece in Chow. It was an innovative Chow. Uh, so now I had acquired a technique after six years. And uh, the approach to this meet was a little bit like a, through my psychoanalytical background because I uh, interpreted uh, uh, eco as a projection I see. of narcissus and uh, a projection of the unconscious part of narcissus. The, 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 all the things, the unconscious part which we are not, uh, we are not accepting of ourselves, we projected it outside. Mm-hmm. And this was rendered through. Uh, vibration created by the movement. So, uh, so the echo is a vibration, and Narcissus, by his movement, is creating these vibrations. So, this is how the story. The story is very linear. Uh, Narcissus is very beautiful. He's in, in love with, with himself, 
and he spun all the other moves and all these things. This is how the, the meat is. And uh, then finally, he, uh, he sees himself in the water and he falls in love with this image. And when he realized that his, his own image, uh, and he, he, in the poet, he says, the poet says that he became a flower, Narcissus. Or I, I say that he, uh, because he couldn't take out the image from the water, he became water, he became unconscious. Yeah, well. So it, this is the, so this is my Narcissus, which became a classic. I mean, uh, it was presented in, uh, in the East West Dance Encounter as one of the, among the, uh, finer uh, innovative item in Indian dance. So, I, I, but it was through the child dance, not through the Odyssey. Odyssey will take some more time for me to um, to, to choreograph uh, something in Odyssey. But Chao gave me that liberty much before. I see. Can we so, share? Can we share the little yeah, excerpt with this, everybody? This, and then uh, I want to. Uh, this, in this, fact. Uh, I want to go back uh, to Italy uh, after uh, showing the Narcissus because if you can remember the first innovations or the uh, first first sort of uh, inspirations that you brought in theater, it would be great if you can share, if you can remember a line or two of what you did uh, uh, after your first trip here. We'll come to that. But here is uh, Narcissus. But about this video, this is in a open space, is a garden, yeah. is it? Yeah. Tell us about is, this video. Yeah, it is actually done on the full, uh, on the rooftop uh, of the Nehru Center in Bombay. I see. But this this, 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 this shooting. And it but is the same it, year when you presented it in 1980. No, no, uh, no, two years after that. I see. So this is after you had already shown at the, yeah, the yeah, first. Yeah. This is the yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and uh, this is just the beginning what I want to send. But uh, but otherwise, it is important to have uh, lighting because uh, yes. when uh, Narcissus uh, sees himself, actually there is a pool of light and which make the shadow inside the light. So the shadow is the reflection. I see. So, but uh, in, in this case, in any case, uh, NFBC had uh, had uh, shoot this. Uh, yes. No, NFBC. Yeah, NFBC. Uh, it was it was in Nehru in the in, 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 in the yeah in, in Bombay on the foot on the rooftop of the Nehru Center. It's quite something. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, uh, you won't be able to see, but everybody else will, and I will, of course.
Oh, that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I love the part, the swimming in the water and seeing and then... I wish, I mean, we had the entire film. <laughs> entire footage, I mean. See, it was interesting because uh, uh, when I did it uh, in 75, uh, um, there was uh, this composer, Igor Bakevich. Uh -huh. uh, he's from France and he was staying in Norway. So at that time, uh, he uh, already he had a computerized system in his uh, really? place. Yeah, and he was doing this computerized music. So I went there and uh, whatever movement I was doing, he created the, the vibration to that movement. So we really worked together so that the correspondence between movement and vibration was uh, was there. So it, it all came together and in the East West Dance Encounter, Igor Vakevich and and they were, it, it was actually waited to, it, it stayed in my bag for six years that meet. I see. Which, because that was, what was, that was the, why I came. And, and finally, it actually materialized in a different way right. from what I played. Mm. So. The sound, of course, in this video is not as loud in the sense it's low. Is it? Yeah, the, the, the it isn't so low, actually, of the video. Uh, maybe, yeah, in the video only. I see. Um, yeah, well, I just send it, uh, send the entire video. I'll work on it. We do audio restoration at, at my foundation, so we specialize in that. I'll yeah, try to, I'll try yeah. to uh, help you out. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. And uh, so this was your first. I uh, mentioned to you that I wanted to come back to uh, the first adaptations that you did in theater. Do you remember something like a line or two? Uh, no, the first adaptation that uh, Cupid and Psyche, there was no line, uh, there was no uh, text. Okay. Uh, it was all images, uh, it was all uh, uh, projection because uh, that story, Cupid and Psyche, uh, the story is that uh, Psyche cannot see Cupid during the daytime, they can unite with him only during the night. So uh, he cannot, she can, so, um, so I use the shadow, um, the shadow and the, the person. So it was more uh, visual, there was not much of a text to remember. Text in the sense, I meant there was a script actually, yeah. It was yeah, other words of what you did, yeah. 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 Which you're I, telling I, anyway, yeah. I remember two lines of the Rusante. Rusante, uh, Rusante is the Teatro dell'arte. Uh, Teatro dell'Arte is a very popular uh, theater form from Italy and uh, in a dialect, uh, but it became classic. Those kind of popular which become classic. Teatro dell'Arte is a very, so um, very uh, hearty type of uh, characters. And uh, I was doing the, the new uh, the, the lady and the, my husband had come back uh, from the war and uh, he, he was all uh, in a band running uh, without a name. Very poor, he had become very without money. He came back and all, uh, and so she, she says, Rusante, si tu ti, te ne guagno niente, ne vero, no? I said, You are not, you are not uh, earn anything, eh? you have come back. <laughs> I, mean, I remember that was a, a two or three lines in the beginning. <laughs> so I, I, that, that was during the, the first uh, year of. Um, Theater. I should have I should have sent some photos of, of those theater. Yes. I, I have you know black and white photos of those times are still perfect. Wow. The black and white um, quality actually, especially in Italy, was very good. And I can I can make out that up to now this, those photos are not even bending, not not uh, not uh, any whitish of it. Still still from that time of the theater 72, 73. So, yeah, we will we'll, we'll put them together maybe as a follow up of this better. Uh, we can maybe do a little photo journey of, I mean, photo mapping. We can visual journey. That, yes, visual journey. But yeah. uh, this is uh, this is fantastic. And uh, what else uh, did you do? That was one line. Did you remember the other, the echo uh, part, the one that you do? Do you remember a bit of the script? Can you share something with that? Uh, if no, you See, the, the first uh, ex really experiment, uh, it was this Narcissus, which I did here. When I, uh, when I came, uh, I, I had planned to do this Narcissus as a theater work, but then it didn't happen, because it became a, a, a chow innovative piece. 
so so I didn't go back to theater. In fact, uh, um, I utilized uh, to this Chow movement with a lot of theater group in uh, India, like the Rangayana in Mysore, also a National School of Drama. I, I, did, I gave workshop to, to theater worker because, but at that point I was a dancer. I mean, I, but, I but uh, I thought that uh, this kind of uh, movement, uh, the theater people could be very interested because uh, they can utilize it for the physical uh, physical work. I mean, uh, Chao it is very expressive and uh, it utilizes the entire body. Whereas any other classical form, like Odyssey, uh, you have to specialize more uh, on the facial expression, on the uh, mudra, of the hands, on the tala. But this uh, uh, this uh, this is very theatrical. The Chao one is very theatrical because it's dramatized uh, of the entire body, dramatization of the entire. Body. So that's why when I saw it for the first time in Delhi, when I came, I, I started Odyssey, but immediately in 79, but immediately in, uh, after two months when I followed Guruji, like Luchana Mohapati, he went to Delhi for a workshop of Odyssey. So I followed him. And when I was in Delhi, I just walked into the Bharatiya Vidya Bhava, uh, Bharatiya Kalakendra. And uh, the first class I went inside, I saw this beautiful style. The one, uh, one lady was doing some the um, bar movement, the movement of a bar. And I remained like this, I don't know how, I just entered into the class and I, 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 it was incredible, I, I could see the entire body um, becoming the bar. So there was this ground, so I asked him, what is this dance for? And he said, this is my band Chao, and I said, from where? I said, from Orissa. I said, oh, that, <laughs> since I was going back to Orissa, <laughs> Days, I say that is I, that is my destiny. Right. So I, uh, I both both of them from the same soil, uh -huh. and both of them were appealing to me, both Odyssey and Chow. So it was if there was any doubt, <laughs> that, that was my destination then. Right. And you so, met Hari Naik, uh, but it was not Hari Naik ji in Delhi. You met him uh, in, <laughs> back in Bhubaneswar. Krishna Chandra Naik in uh, Bharatiya Kala Kendra. But he gave me the name of Sri Hari Nai because see. I told him I'm going back to Orissa. Orissa right. so, so, and Sri Hari Nai was teaching in uh, Utkal Sangit Mahavidyalaya in Bhubaneswar. So I was in Katak. So every day in the morning with my Luna, I was going to the bus stand in Katak. You drove a Luna, I see. Yeah, that was, I was the first one in ladies in Orissa. And my Luna is still there. Really? Yeah, yeah, I conserve everything. And uh, then I, I was going by bus to Bhubaneswar, to the college, learning the chow, going back, take the luna, go back to my, my Barsati, and then in the afternoon I was going to Guruji's house for Odyssey. So that was my in the morning the chow in Bhubaneswar and in uh, Odyssey. I, I was in Qatar. For, for 11 years I was in Qatar. I then I, I shifted to Bhubaneswar. And uh, to come to the theatre part, I mean, when you mention about uh, the um, um, the chow as uh, something that can supplement or help the theatre folks, can you share some of that work with us? Um, what yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. Uh, it, uh, the chow is uh, a very coordinated type of movement because it is attack and defence. So it is very so every when we do the the, the basic uh, chali or the basic steps of chow, uh, there is um, this uh, alternate of uh, uh, this is the defense and this is the attack. Here you are uh, like holding the sword and here you are holding the shield. Okay. So the entire body, legs, elevation and uh, the upper portion of the body has uh, six movement. And the lower uh, portion of the body, the legs, at 36 movements. So, for each uh, um, type of body movement, there are six types of legs movement which you can have a very systematic way. So, um, so if there are wave movement, side movement, uh, this kind of, of movement of the torso. So, so it's, it's a, a very systematic way of uh, learning uh, to control your body. But then at the, at the same time, balance, because a lot of work on the legs is on one leg. And uh, stamina, there are a lot of jumps. So it helps uh, 
other styles, in a sense, apart theater people, but also people from other styles. They can get stamina, balance, uh, control. So th these are all uh, uh, very scientific type of, uh, of uh, uh, body, how to uh, control your body, and how to know what you can do with your, with your body. So it can be applied. So in fact, I did a, a, a workshop also with Qatar people with the, from, from Qatar. From the, so they, uh, they, they are, they are, they are a lot of, they do a lot of work on footwork, and but the movement is less. So for them uh, to do this child dance was opening up the possibility, discovering new possibilities with their, with their body. I mean, you don't have to become a child dancer. So you can get from child uh, experience many things which you can utilize in other sphere. So the theater people also, they were getting, because in theater uh, you, uh, you have to do battle scenes. Um, martial scenes. I mean, you have to do uh, a lot of, uh, of mimicry with the body. So this gives agility. Is uh, uh, so it it's, it it's, it's help the, the the theater the theater practitioner to utilize your body in different way. So so uh, there was a lot of uh, interest in all this. And uh, what what I was teaching them it was the basic. Uh, uh, movement which are there in the body, uh, in, the, in the child, and also coordinating the, because it's a martial form, so uh, it's, you, you have to move in different direction and be alert to the people who are near you. I mean, your, the movements of the sword, it has to be in a certain way. If you do a mistake, it will hurt or yourself or the person who is, who is near you. So the martial forms gives you a lot of alertness also and sense of space and uh, you have to attack and defense in all the directions so we see with your eyes behind also not only. So, so all these things uh, you, you can utilize it in your own work, whatever you want to, to do later. Right. So, so this was the approach which I was taking when I was teaching with the uh, theater people. And uh, how was, uh, uh, what was the technique when you were learning theater back in Italy? Uh, what was the regimen? I mean, how, how would you practice and what were you taught? Uh, and how did, of course, the follow-up, uh, uh, just to add on would be, how did that help in, uh, uh, you know, in your studies here? Uh, if you can uh, share your thoughts. It was uh, the first years uh, were more uh, 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 on a recitation through the words, I mean, a conventional theater, which you are acting. So I was not very conscious of uh, what to do with my body, because in that in that type of theater, which is more classic, as I say, conventional, uh, they don't uh, they don't give much. The director it gives more importance to the way you recite, and the way you, you, you speak, uh, the intonation of the words. And uh, certain movements, of course, are there, how you enter the stage, how you walk, how you stand. But there is no uh, exercise of the body much apart from that. So, so then when I came to um, take part of the Grotowski experiment, uh, the street theater, then Eugenio Barba uh, also is, is an Italian who is another traveler, who uh, has opened the Odin Theater in uh, Denmark. So he was a student of Jesse Butoski and then he founded his own uh, uh, group and um, he became very renowned. Uh, so they also came to Italy and I attended some of their workshops. So it was uh, more, much, a lot of on improvisation, uh, certain basic exercises which we were doing with the body, some acrobatic also, to learn really the pirouette, uh, the what jump and uh, all, all these things, so to have agility with the body. And uh, then to use props uh, in a way that you improvise. Uh, then uh, in, with the bread and puppet, I used to I learned how to go on stilt, uh, on the yeah wooden stilt, and um, and to make a lot of big big uh, head and puppets with uh, paper mesh, and uh, and to create those and to become those characters in the parade which we are doing on the on the street. So each each workshop was um, was giving a different approach. It depends which group uh, you were taking part. So and all this, uh, as I said, it was still 
in the uh, in the in the is a search of uh, what was finally my uh, search of my way of expression. So uh, when uh, I was searching for, so it didn't. Uh, uh, it, I got enriched by all this experience, but I didn't uh, uh, stop to any of them. So finally, I I when I stop and it was here when I reached finally I started again to 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 walk <laughs> to learn how to walk <laughs> like a, a small baby. So. But but that was important because uh, uh, because you it, it's because you you search every experience is important in life and uh, and uh, you you keep on searching until uh, uh, but when when I I was not conscious I was not aware even when I um, reach here that it would become my life um, choice of life forever I just follow the current. It just, in a natural way, the ticket which I was supposed to utilize for coming back after one year, I had one year ticket, return ticket, so then it was thrown away, and for six years I never went back to Italy. I mean, it's, uh, it's that that how how can you plan something like this in life? It just happened on its own. Well, given that your dad was always with the authorities and you were agitating outside, he would have been very happy not to see you. <laughs> no, the no, they, they, they came after, he, he gave me the Luna. When oh, he, he came gave you, oh, I see. <laughs> and uh, he, very, very strange, like a miracle, because he came and uh, he was convinced. I mean, he saw me completely change, completely at peace with myself. I see. They liked me very much. They don't know what they because Guruji didn't know English and my parents also don't know English, they knew French only. So, but they liked each other very much. And <laughs> so he, he was very happy about my choice and from then on work, from then on work, when uh, after six years I started to go back to Italy to bring my musicians there to do performances. We did very, very, uh, very uh, prestigious uh, performances. I, I, I was able in the 80s and 90s to place the Odyssey dance in very prestigious festival in Italy, dance festival. Uh, yeah, that was my ambition actually. I didn't want to perform uh, on the fringe of some uh, Mela type uh, right. Indian, uh, snake, uh, elephant, charmer type. So I, I wanted to <laughs> present this uh, uh, dance in a digni dignified uh, dance festival. So it was not easy, but uh, we did quite a few of them. I say we because my mother also became uh, my agent. I so see. She improvised <laughs> as an agent. And uh, she, because I was not there, I was yes. here. So he, she tried to keep, uh, I was directing her from here. Right. And mind you, all this without internet, without mobile, wow. without you. It was not even. STD, I didn't have. I was a paying guest, so right. I, I was, I was the guest of uh, of this person who had the phone. I had to uh, book the phone to Italy. The direct STD was not. But even then, <laughs> no all facts, all, no facts at that time to begin with. Telegram, telegram, Only telegrams. I see. Letters, letters uh, were taking exactly 20 days. I still <laughs> have. Come. Twenty days, but uh, it was it worked. I mean, yeah, it worked, yeah. <laughs> did all this uh, beautiful tour with my musicians, uh, we performing Vignale Danza in Abano, Abano Danza in uh, La Versiliana, uh, all this very prestigious dance festival in Italy. So, so that's that's. Uh, how it so, uh, tell me about uh, the psycho. What I mean. Uh, psychoanalysis, the way you interpreted the idea of the echo, uh, you know, there's a forgotten term in exegesis uh, back in Punjab. As, as a conservator, I, have, I came across that word. Uh, it was used extensively with me when uh, my eldest uh, teacher, Bhai Arjun Singh Tarangad, born 1900, uh, well, he's second oldest. My grandfather, 1897 born, would be the oldest that I studied with. Um, but, uh, you know, I started very briefly with my grandfather, he died in 86, 85 is when I got a few things from him and of course his diaries, etc, etc have been very, very inspiring and, you know, a lot of fodder there. Um, the term Dadrishtan is something that goes uh, 
into the realm of what would be uh, how you said how you interpreted the echo, uh, uh, where where it is uh, not uh, you know okay, uh, if I may, one is the word. Let's say there is the word um, uh, ragu ragu uh, ragupati. Let's say. Uh, Raghupati's adaptations would be, for example, uh, the son of Dasrat Ram, uh, but uh, that has one meaning. Raghupati simply means the Raghu is light and the husband of Lord of Light. Um, the um, uh, when you go more into that uh, beyond the Shabdaf, the word meaning, you go to the context of what it is. But then, in the end, it is Raghu is not just the sun. Uh, sorry, the first meaning, literal meaning would be Raghu would be sun. But then you go into the drishtant of it, it is more about light. That means Raghu is all the stars that there are in the sky, in, in the cosmos, they're all Raghu. Uh, they have Raghu, they have Prakash. But then Raghu Pati is the creator of the idea of light, which is the creator, which is beyond birth, beyond death, which is beyond Kal. Uh, so that meaning is absent, uh, the term Dadrishtant is absent from the Punjabi exegetical, uh, you know, kind of endeavors or uh, stories that people have taken. They are just, they just get trapped. They're not able to escape the labyrinth of the Drishtant at best, you know, the simile, the, the phrase, the metaphors, etc. used and what they mean and what is it somehow referring literally uh, they're in the tangible aspect so I'm interested in um, your uh, insights to learn from your insights about this idea of psychoanalysis where your interpretation and adaptation reminded me of that where you see why the word actually exists the generic idea uh, it's it's like that so can you shed some light on I mean share some thoughts uh, on the psychoanalysis part of your work. Like that. So the meat as it is, uh, Ovid uh, is telling that uh, metam it is part of the metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means to change into something else. So in this big book, he's uh, uh, analyzing all the phenomena in, in nature which are changing into something else. And he, he tells the story which was behind the change. So for Narcissus, he says Narcissus is a beautiful boy, he is a beautiful boy, he's hunting in the forest. And uh, Echo is a nymph, so there are two characters. In the myth, there are two characters, women and, 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 uh, uh, women and men. Nymph is falling in love with Narcissus, but Narcissus is uh, too proud and he is not uh, giving, he is not, uh, 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 not even uh, refusing all the advances of her. So, because of this proudness, he will be, will be receive a curse. From all means of the to, that he will also one day fall in love with somebody who he will never be able to get because he is refusing all the love offers from from others. So this is the the, the, the need. And uh, it says so because of the curse which he has re uh, received. At a certain point, he is seeing himself in the water. And he's falling in love with, with his own image, and he cannot get this image, and you cannot get him because it is himself. He cannot right? so he transforms himself into a flower, which is the Narcissus flower. Narcissus is a white bluish flower which is there in the middle. So this is the meat. So from there, what I did, it would have been quite easy to uh, interpret the two Abhinaya, for example. The beautiful Narcissus and the beautiful lady and the offer of love and uh, he refused, I mean all these things. But I didn't want to do that and I went into the Chao form because the Chao is more abstract. So it doesn't... Uh, so, so, so that was one level. The other level is uh, I interpreted uh, uh, the conscious and unconscious. Means through my psychoanalytical uh, experience, which I had, um, I, I knew that uh, uh, whatever uh, it is unconscious, uh, uh, whatever part of us we don't want to accept, uh, we project it into others. So we see in others things which we don't accept of ourselves. So this projection, I put it as an ego. 
Eco is somebody who cannot talk if somebody, you cannot talk first, can only re, uh, repeat if others talk. So, um, so, so, the, the, um, so that is uh, one thing. So, so the, the Narcissus I interpreted as movement, which cre by uh, creating, so by moving creates vibration in the air. So then the conscious and unconscious things, I uh, visualize it with movement and vibration. So the vibration is taken care of by the music and the movement is the, the dance. The dance. So when he try to escape from this vibration, he, he makes more movement by escaping. So he is surrounded more and more by this vibration. So that means when you don't want to recognize uh, yourself because you are refusing that part of your, those part of yourself which are unconscious because you don't want to accept it and you are you are projecting in, in others so you uh, you become more and more unconscious you, you come to know yourself even less whereas the, 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 the psychoanalysis says that uh, you have to uh, accept those parts I mean to, to become aware of those of, of those parts of yourself that you are not accepting. Other way, neurosis happens. So, uh, so these are all layers. So, the, one it is the interpretation, psychoanalytic. One is the visualization. The visualization is movement and vibration of the of the. So, more movement he creates, more vibration he creates. But at a certain point, is surrounded all over because he tries to escape from them. If you try to to escape, the unconscious is submerging you. So the, 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 the way out is not to escape from the unconscious, but to try to, uh, to accept it, to, 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 to acknowledge it. So when he cannot escape anymore, the only path that he has is that curse which he received. The, the, where, where I, with, the, with this movement, uh, I, uh, which uh, the, the sound, because the, the, the sound is the, the vibration, no, I, want to, no, I don't want to hear the sound. And I go into this part, and at the end of the part is the course. I mean, I see, I, I'm thirst, and I want to drink water, and I see. So in the beginning, I, I, I'm in love with this image which I see. And I re realize that I cannot take it out, then I become water myself. So I, I get into the water. So I don't follow the meat which says they become a flower, but I keep on this dialectic of conscious and unconscious. So it's been a process of synthesis of many things. The synthesis of the movement of Chao, the synthesis of my psychoanalytical uh, background, and the synthesis of the Greek myth, the narrative. So all these things together, they create this. And it was, uh, at the, it, it took five years to mature, uh, in a sense that, not that I never thought about it. The, the Narcissus, the, the, the Greek myth was there in my bed. I, I completely immersed myself in learning Odyssean Chao and all those things. But when finally that particular occasion came and uh, Lechner told me, you choreograph something for the East-West Dance Encounter, which is not something which you have learned from your guru or anything. Then that things which was laying down silently there in the back since the last six, five years came up. And that was the right moment it came up. And as I said, the, the composer, music composer was also in India, Igor Bakelit in Pondicherry. Like everything came together and it was the right uh, For so me, that, uh, it's also, I mean, the, the point of uh, uh, the shock, the awe that you, uh, can you do that again, the Abhinay, uh, the one that you're looking uh, down to the water, right? I, I, I use the like uh, I I, uh, I use the, the wave movement of the body, which is interesting. Like the child, if this is uh, the uh, movement which is called the So we learn this in this way: the, the body moves like a, the torso moves like a wave. This. So in this piece, I use this.
So, so this is how I utilize the Chao movement, uh -huh. but interpreting, giving the dramatization to it. I see. So, I missed that. Uh, sadly, you know, I was trying to go to the right frame, and I missed some part <laughs> of uh, the the uh, facial part. But yes, the um, uh, the uh, the point I wanted to mention is that uh, I mean the way it seemed. My response was the uh, that it, it, you know it's a how do you say uh, it's like a twilight zone where the being a uh, the the idea of the narcissist falling in love with oneself and also the death of the ego when the realization is that I cannot take it away, take it out. And then the merger into the water. For me, that stood out. That the 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 idea that the idea of the ego and its uh, uh, the death of the ego uh, uh, was something that uh, uh, struck me at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's possible. Yeah, if you interpret the conscious as a, the conscious part is as the ego, that is a uh, end of it. The, the difference between the ego, the obstinacy is the thorn. Uh, the idea of humility uh, and the death of the ego is the bloom. So for me, it was, uh, uh, I mean, I was moved by that thought, by that, by that possibility within that. Yeah, in fact, that Jesus is proud. Yes. He's very proud of himself. So yeah. that is what you call ego. So. It, it all, all this meat actually, they are going to be interpreted according to you, what you project into it. And what you project into it is what it is your baggage yeah. from where you <laughs> So yeah. it's, it's very interesting. They, they, that is how meat are eternal because they respond to you, to you, to respond to all the different uh, uh, corner angle from where you can yeah. interpret. I mean, uh, because uh, sometimes myths are also glorified when we stop looking at the entire story. Uh, uh, when we look, uh, when we pick up uh, aspects, pages, folios from uh, a story and we frame them, freeze them in time. Uh, the idea of Krishna, for example, the whole uh, bet of, uh, 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 you know, he betted in favor of the Pandavas, hoping that they will give a better rule, maybe they were more justified, but the, the, the Kauravas were actually legally the heirs, they were the rulers. So it is a battle that ensues for what reason? In the end, nobody rules, it's only destruction. So when we look at the entire story, we learn something more. Uh, the moral of the story is upon looking at every single word written in a tale, but uh, we we like to get enamored with one portion, with the glamour part, with the glorious part, and we somehow base ourselves on that. Uh, that is uh, so for me that uh, the moment that he merges into the water uh, and and uh, then blooms like a uh, flower, I thought that was very very touching for me. That idea of disappearance of. Uh, the futility of one's might that I cannot take that image out. Uh, one realizes that I am not, uh, that my power is limited. <laughs> mm -hmm. That I cannot, I can, that which I see I cannot, but that is also me. Uh, yes. And uh, I thought that was, that was a lot uh, which, which was there, which you were able to, I mean, thanks to you, I was able to look at that, I think. Uh, uh, Manjuri Sinha, uh, the, the yeah. writer, she is of course saying, uh, well, she is for once talking to me. So I'll let you know what she's talking to me. She okay. says, she says, Bhaiji, Ilyana is the perfect choice. So as if she was talking about me. I mean, look at that. I'm <laughs> heartbroken already. <laughs> she says, Bhaiji, Ilyana is the uh, perfect choice to be invited during Navratri. She personifies the concept of Shakti fighting all sorts of obstacles in achieving her chosen goal. Oh, very thank you, thank you. <laughs> See that, yeah. I mean, I was just a passing medium. Look at that. Girls talking, you know, the feminist movement talking to each other. <laughs> we are a lot then. Eh? <laughs> you are surrounded now. Are totally. Surrounded. Look at that. Sudanda. So in Pathan court, uh, Raman, Ramanjeet in Kolkata, Manjiriji in Gurgaon, 
and you in Odisha and I am gone. Uh, look at that. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, we are in lot shedding here, but uh, we still survive with the inverter. <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah, three lights are gone. And uh, to, to come to um, uh, the psychoanalysis part again, I, I, I'm amazed. I mean, the kind of learning that you brought, the kind of, uh, you know, because once you're able to see things, you become choosy. Uh, you, you cannot. And to be met with Keluchan, Keluchan Mahapatra, who was humility incarnate, who was just an embodiment of beauty. So I, I see that match as well. What was it like? What, what was it like? I mean, to see him in the, in the seventies and uh, uh, late seventies and early eighties. What was it like? Uh, and uh, Odyssey as such was taking shape, still taking shape uh, as such. Yeah. In the seventies, uh, already the process has been quite advanced. The, the Odyssey was taking shape more in the fifties uh, and sixties. So by the end of the seventies was established. Hmm. So uh, you can say that up to 75, 70, 75, maybe that struggling was still there a little bit. But then, but then um, when I reached in 79, also Guruji's style also, I, it was the right time because he also during the uh, previous years, he kept on uh, uh, um, in, uh, improving uh, and uh, researching on his style and uh, make it more precise and uh, through the different experience uh, with different students uh, so the, the entire process went for another for about 20 years so from 55 to 75 the process continued and then uh, by the time uh, uh, 79 he started to have this uh, intensive workshops in uh, which I, I followed because I didn't leave uh, any moment <laughs> that possibility to learn. So um, apart from the summer workshop in Patak in his own house, but then he had a uh, workshop in Delhi in Gandharva Mahavidyalaya, in uh, National Center of Performing Arts in Bombay, in Padatik in Calcutta. So these, these were the three major places, Bombay, Delhi and Calcutta. So this intensive workshop means you were going there from morning to night continuously dancing and then after one month of that, you had enough material to elaborate on your own for quite some time. So, <clears throat> so this is the phase in which uh, the items which were teaching, which is teaching uh, Abhinaya or Pallavi, were consolidated. It, uh, I mean, they, they started to be quite uh, uh, reaching the final stage. So, and also the the scientific all the rules of the body movement, uh, the, um, the head movement, uh, the footwork, uh, the, uh, so everything had been, by that, by, that point, by that time, had become very systematic. So that's why it could satisfy me also, because I am very, I, uh, I mean, I like to have precise, precise uh, uh, indications. Uh -huh. And if I'm not, if I don't understand, I keep on asking. So I was the person who was asking more in the class. All the other Korean girls didn't ask much. <laughs> and so, but he was the creator of what he was teaching, hmm. in a sense, because he was teaching all uh, his own uh, choreographies. So he was able to answer to my question. And for me, I needed to understand through my mind uh, so that my body could respond. So th that approach a little bit an intellectual approach was, was there and of course I was not a child anymore and I had already done studies and all this thing. But in, although I had to become a child again to start all over again in, in India, but still a certain way of analyzing and certain way it, it, it was there. And it, so uh, so he, would, he was able to uh, answer because he knew why he has chosen that particular uh, meaning or that particular interpretation or that particular gesture, what it was behind that. So when I was asking, he was able to reply. So that, um, that mature phase of him, we, we got, I mean, my, my batch, the person who also learned with me. And that was from 79 uh, on and, and, and actually all these workshops started in 79. So, so that, that is, uh, and for me, uh, I mean, I couldn't stop learning because uh, uh, there was something. Every time uh, I, I wanted to reach more uh, knowledge, more perfection, more, and he was so creative that for me also uh, to 
start to create in ODC, it took more time. So that's why I was telling the Chao happened only after six years, it's in, 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 in 85. But, but, um, but uh, with ODC, the first uh, uh, choreography, it was uh, much later. It was in 94. That was Maya Tapana. That was uh, on the concept of Maya. It's a group choreography. That was my first choreography in ODC. That was also quite an experience. I mean, it was to be there and to watch your work as a choreographer. I I see. From outside, not to be inside. So, so that I was helped by uh, Julian Pani, who was a scholar, poet, uh, it was at that, point, at that point in National School of Drama, and uh, he helped me to interpret the concept of Maya. The, 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 it was one hour production in Odyssey, and uh, uh, it, it, there was not much text, only few quotations from some uh, Upanishad, very few, which he helped me to uh, understand. Identify. And also, he yeah, helped me to uh, uh, create a structure of the... Because in, uh, after that also, most of my production will be like this. I will start from uh, some abstract theme, like the concept of time. So this was my concept of time. Or uh, So uh, I, I start from some abstract theme or some topic, and I like to create the script, create the structure, create the development of the... Very rarely I start from a script which is already there. I like Megaduta Meet is my last choreography, that was a classic. Uh, but otherwise, most of my production group choreography in Odyssey, they are all started from a theme. Like I did one on Mother Teresa, one on concept of refugee, uh, one on concept of time. So all of them are uh, So my other panel was also like this, but it was my first one and Jibon Pani helped me in that. And it was one other production where the Odyssey was utilized. We didn't, um, uh, I was not performing in it, I was just choreographing it. I see. We didn't uh, use the dress in the very the totally traditional way of the Odyssey, but a little bit differently. But I introduced different movements. This is quite interesting to know that when I presented this choreography, this production, in the uh, here in Bhuvaneshwar in 98, there was a uh, festival of uh, new choreography. So we were supposed to present things which are not belonging to the big gurus choreography, but the same, second and third generation, which were. And uh, but that time the audience here was not ready to take my my piece, and I I got a lot of bad comments the next day. But after my product, my show in the evening itself. Guruji saw, saw it, and uh, the same night he was supposed to leave for Assam for some uh, program. So after the show, I went to his house. He was packing because he had to leave the same night. And when I reached there, he was packing, and I came from behind. I was <laughs> like this because. I didn't know why. <laughs> so he didn't raise the, the uh, Guru Mas uh, told him, uh, Ileana has, Ileana has come. He, so he knew that I came. Then he said, choreographic masterpiece. I said, what? <laughs> I thought I know. He said, choreographic masterpiece, but tomorrow you will get it. And he left. In fact, the next day he called and people tried to stole me. <laughs> this is not obviously, this is that. But that man, he understood the concept, he understood what was the, why I choose certain, certain movements for certain things. There was the creation of nature. So in the creation of nature, I had to utilize certain movement on the floor because these unformed things, forms were not, the, natural forms were not yet there. So the rocks, the wind, the before coming to the nature, to the tree, to the flower, there was all this movement in the, in the, in the rock formation. Also. So I used rolling, uh, then certain things, unusual movement I used, and he understood each of them. At a certain point, he, was, he also asked me, he didn't understand one point, uh, there was some English narration in it also. And there was a mirage, that everything is a mirage, so I utilized certain uh, things in there. So that point, how I solved that scenery of the mirage, that he asked me specifically, what is that? 
how many they, they can can't imagine what type of intellect he, he had and how open he was because he was such a creative person that he knew that when you create something it is not the movement you should take out and uh, to, to ask is this odyssey or is not odyssey yeah. it is justified it is meaningful inside the context of the so the context of the things the purpose of the data so they are here the school so not everybody could understand so after uh, 10 or 15 years when i re uh, retake out this choreography with my new batch of students and all these things and i represented them in the, in, at that point it didn't create any problem anymore but that time in 94 it was 94 the artist was not a very good but it's okay i mean like my recent experience was with a refugee a refugee is a, a team which of course now we are totally immersed in the covid and all these things but before this you also that you but before we this. before we go to the refugee can we can we show meghanutham because you mentioned about it okay can okay. we can okay. we do that and then we come to uh, come to this and this this is from this is your recent production is it yeah this is last year production last year and uh, how did this come you want to share some things about this uh, uh... see every year actually there is this thing sir that i have a festival called sangam sangam festival where uh, every year uh, i present a new group production choreography so every time one has to have the idea for the next year. I see. So that is, that is, that is always in the start of it. So uh, one day, uh, one one year I did Siddhartha from Hermanes. I see. That was also very interesting. I didn't send it there. Uh, that was a combination of uh, uh, Malakam and Odyssey. Mm. Malakam is that um, uh, acrobatic or pole on the, 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 the yeah. which is in Puri and also in Maharashtra. And policy. So that was very experimental and it went off well. And I also I got with, uh, with, uh, a response from the critics. So Siddhartha, then uh, Thalo, then this, then Mother Teresa, Karuna, that was also one of these, which, which uh, Mahanadi, the story of the river. Then, uh, so this time, uh, and I have a uh, poet, who, Gloria poet, Devadas Chutra which usually writes for me, I go to him with a concept, but you know how the poets are, you never can catch them. So for the, I, I have to wait for, for months, months, maybe then suddenly in one night, he will produce the, the, the script. So Akshara, Akshara, which you mentioned, it is on Oriya alphabet. Mm. The entire production of Oriya alphabet, how the script, Oriya script is round, so how does the, the children uh, start to, to, to do the round in the sand while starting to... And that is a symbol of Jagannath also. But children don't think about that. It's just a, so it's a beautiful script he did. I see. So last year he didn't do a script. <laughs> so there was no way that I could get any... Uh, okay. So this Megadutan, uh, I was fascinated by the idea of... Uh, I didn't know much about, uh, I mean, how much I went into Jayadev uh, uh, script and uh, um, text of Kid Govind and all these things. But uh, uh, Kalidasa, is, it, it was not so uh, known to me. And uh, so, uh, so I, but I like the idea of this messenger of the cloud as a messenger. It, I, it was very poetic. But when I started to go into the script, my God, such a uh, such a richness of images, such a depth of images, and I became in love with them. <laughs> but apart from that, I also can't And uh, um, so, so then uh, to choose out of that, how to make it because. It's not a long poem, but of course you have to choose what 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 to okay. and uh, to maintain. So what can be also more suitable so for for the dance and uh, so that that process went. And during I was doing it in this period in September, uh, so it was the, all the clouds were there in the sky. And I really had 
started to uh, admire all the design of the clouds while he was doing Megadita. Because every time you do puppet and uh, you try to, uh, to imagine if you have to talk to a cloud and give your, the, your message, love message to any of them, which one you would choose. So it was very open, open type of uh, horizon. So, and then I, I had to um, put also the, uh, I wanted some watercolor behind uh, of that type of, uh, of um, watercolor and that type of style uh, of uh, those time of the, the, the ladies waiting and the, the pickups and the, uh, the, the whatever the images are there in the Vegadutam and uh, the, the, the birds and the swans and the, uh, he describes so much in nature, there is so much richness of nature. So I asked um, one uh, friend of mine, she's a painter, so she provided that. So, so we, it, 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 it actually it enriched the, the canvas of the, of the Fantastic. So shall we show that now? Yeah. We, can, yes. we can, we can give that. स्वजल कणिका शीतले नानीले सनाथे गवाक्षे विद्युत गर्भ स्तिमित नयना तत्सनाथे गवाक्षे So from um, Jaydev to Kalidas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and well. yeah. So uh, the idea of uh, I mean Kelucharan Das, uh, you know, child <laughs> that Abhinay was. Uh, uh I watering. No, he would just. <laughs> He would just stay. I mean, the last that I saw was at the NCPA. Uh, I sang uh, before him. He performed after me. Uh, okay. uh, and uh, uh, it was just extraordinary. So, how was it coming from a theater background who understood the idea of theater from psychoanalysis and psychology and literature? Uh, and again, the courage to the sort of not just the courage, but to have that uh, uh, to be able to carve a relationship in which um, uh, it is not a taboo to ask questions or inquire about things. And I think uh, that element, that aspect of the discourse is missing from, uh, you know, I represent that, for example, within the tradition, I'm the grammarian. So I'm the one always with the questions. I'm the one who has so many teachers, all with a swollen face, <laughs> because they were furious. All with a swollen face, okay. oh, with me, that they're upset because I asked them a question. <laughs> like, for example, oh, uh, you know, I learned this composition. I said, all right, I learned this composition. So it went, uh, uh, okay. So he said, this is Tigan. So I write down, I said, Tigan, all right, what is then, how is the Tigan? Because, so I said, it is one of the voices, you know, 
So it's, I said it's eight times and sixteen times. It is nothing got to do with the tigun. I said this is how we play. I said but this is how we play, but it's not tin gun. So you know, several elders were swollen until Tarangar Sahib said, "Oh, it is the tija darja, the third multiple of two. Nobody in South Asia knew about what is the difference. Why do they call tha, dugun, tigun, and chogun? The it is, and that happens in every rhythmic uh, system." So if you go with a sava, with a, a beat and a quarter, savai, so it will have the dugun of which will be two and a half times the beat, the tigun would be five times the beat and chogun would be ten times the beat. So it has a terminology which nobody remembers, but it's different than tin gun. Tin gun is three times, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I understand that, uh, you know, very intimately when you say, I was able to ask <laughs> The questions with Kelacharanda, how does this go, how does that go, what is the meaning of this and that. How is it to learn, I mean, the Abhinay part coming the, with the background that you had of theater, you know, and so on and so forth. What was it like studying from Kelacharanda? And if you can share some of, some, you know, remind us of him, if you may. Actually, it was, it was yeah, both the things together because he kept on uh, demonstrating in front of us. So naturally, the tendency was the, that we should uh, repeat what he does. But also, he would accept questions. So that he was open to questions. Like this Yahi Madhava, which I performed before, only for this action, I mean, the, how Radha is refusing or rejecting Krishna, means uh, that action, uh, that Yahi Madhava, means the, in the first, all in that world, so much is there. Because, first of all, she has been pining for him. She is uh, totally in love with him. She is pained because already she has seen that uh, he has come not only late, but he has all these uh, signs of uh, uh, having spent the night somewhere. She has to reject him after, and he, and he is her life. I mean. He, without him, he can he, she can she can live. But still, she has to. She is finding the uh, indignity and uh, to maintain with, the, with that dignity of refusing her him. How? In which way? And more, moreover, she is a uttamanaita. Is not a uh, not a eh, go away. And there are many ways to send away somebody. So. In fact, different interpretation of Yahi Madhava from different Guru. It can be Yahi Madhava, that rejection can be in many ways. But Guruji, why he was uh, insisting and why, for, what was the meaning of, so it was the hand of Krishna is here. So, Yahi Madhava. So, you go come back and again look at him. So, this, for this, it may be hundred times repeated, only this gesture. You forget about the climate, the, maybe it was 40 degree outside with all the porta down in the Guruji's room and it was two o'clock in the summer, oh, doesn't matter what is outside. You keep on uh, this Yahi Mata until it's it's coming. So it, there is a there is a she's firm in, the, in his in her action. She's not uh, hesitating. But how she is refusing him? Uh, in which which kind of uh, proudness is she, is she proud? Or she? So painful dignity, little bit of proud, but how? What is percentage of all this? So all this, it is there in his teaching. So from there, naturally, if you want to go deep, you can go deep and you start going to analyzing the character of Radha, reading more, reading the entire Gita Govinda, how it was. So that came later on, right? of course. But in that act, which is just related to that particular Ashtapadi, and it is taught, so 
to understand why it's so important, which kind of force you're putting, which, which kind of rejection is you are like this or or just like this. I mean, every every inch of your action is important. So that is the guru just teaching. And uh, the, the, all the Abhinaya. Guru Yadunanda Chanda Sisira Karina Karina Payo Dari Guru Yadunanda Chanda so everything was so and uh, the music uh, the, so you singing in that whatever it goes with the action and the flow of the music it is, it is uh, um, so it's it's a uh, so of course, with, with you repeating it so many times means you you have to become spontaneous when you do. So that is the process. You but you repeat and repeat until it becomes in your blood. And it does it doesn't mean that you become mechanic. You become spontaneous by absorbing it inside. So that that is actually what is the process of learning from the guru when it is a good guru. When he's a good guy, and I had the best, so of course <laughs> that was my. But but even then, in Puriya Dunandana, so for example, then uh, she says, uh, So she says, you put with the chandana, you make uh, leaf pattern on my breast. So there, he chooses different chooses the creeper, the flower, the spot. So then to, uh, to, um, to explain us that meaning, he would take us apart. So the married people and the grown-up people will, will, <laughs> will, will be explained totally. The other people will have to repeat <laughs> what he does. <laughs> so, I see. Yeah. So, um, but he he had a way to expand and uh, sometime we were uh, learning something standing you no know? and uh, he he start to fly with his explanation explanation expression so you'll see all the girls one by one sitting down <laughs> then the last one which has remained the most uh, faithful one but she will also so he, he had a lot of uh, way of, and then uh, in the middle of all these classes also his way of imitating us or to, to say some jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was an excellent imitator. That's why he could do the female role so well, because uh, he was observing, observing continuously. He will, uh, if, if we go on the road and some, some lady with, with, with hips and with guy and she, somebody would, Walk like this, she will tell. You. See, this ati elephant walking. <laughs> so, so, will come. so everything he will observe and tell us, and uh, so that he actually became so great. Also because he didn't confine his learning in a classroom, he never hardly went to school. So his well, his uh, learning was from life. Yeah, so, sort of life. Yeah, exactly. Kept on learning up to the end, so so that's that. How did he imitate you? What was his favorite uh, tease to you? <laughs> no, I will meet. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was in the art. Um, sometime uh, this uh, that body movement of Chow will come, so <laughs> he will, he will uh, <laughs> do that. Then he will call me, hey, Italy, hey, kya hai, huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for, for, for all of us, he had a name. But I got so many Sola. <laughs> Sola, but affectionately, but still. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, but then uh, also unexpectedly, like uh, I was doing this Sita Harana. At that, at that point in the 80s, uh, that was my main item. Sita Harana, the Ramayana, two Sita Harana. 
um, not to uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, so when we went to Italy, uh, tour, and uh, that day I performed and he was playing. So at the end of the performance, he gave me a big back on the, on the, uh, yeah. I said, no, I must have done something uh, terrible to do. He said, today you did very well, you did very well. <laughs> It was the most unexpected things. So all our sometimes, because I wanted always to be in the first line in the class, but because I'm tall, so I didn't take it behind. <laughs> so that was. It. But because then I learned very fast. So then when he was composing something new, then he had to call me in front. Then again. So, so when I was expecting to be called in front, he would send me back. Huh? He was having that. Uh, the, he was when I, uh, crushing your ego. If you didn't have an ego, then uh, he didn't have to crush anything. But if you had an ego, he knew how to crush it. <laughs> Psychologically, he was uh, very good. That is part of the guru. So. And uh, to come to other Abhinay, uh, just to uh, uh, speak of the Abhinay part, I mean, uh, he also did uh, uh, Draupadi, you know, the Krishna's uh, thing as well, uh, the child and uh, that. I think a couple of things he showed, even sitting over a meal was quite mind-boggling. Do you remember some of that uh, from... Um, he was, he had some, I don't know which one, his masterpiece. I see. In his location. Apart from uh, uh, the Gita Govinda, he had one Tebarta. Tebarta, I don't know if you have seen it. That, that both men who, who, uh, who uh, bring Rama and Sita and Lakshmana uh, uh, across the river. And it's a very humble man. And when he sees Rama, the type of uh, uh, devotion he, he, uh, he shows towards Rama, and then also he is afraid that uh, if Rama goes in his boat, uh, because Rama's feet had already changed Ahalya into a stone. So, so in my my whole life it will uh, will go. But so he asked, can I wash your feet? So he goes take the water, wash the feet of Brahma. So that and then brings them. So that was really interpretation by Guru Jesus was incredible because that humbleness and that, that natural uh, uh, of the humble man and the uh, excitement in seeing uh, his. Rama and then uh, the, the, how he get the courage to ask him if he can wash the feet and then, and then finally they, he rolls on the floor uh, uh, when Rama is then gone. He, he. So, it's, uh, so that is most incredible. Also when, when I, I uh, came with me to Italy uh, in one tour, we had, uh, we had uh, designed the program in that way, that it will be only epics. So I did the Ekalabya, which is a, a solo piece from uh, Sarala Das Mahabharata. Then uh, me and uh, uh, Guruji's uh, son, Ratikan, we did uh, uh, Chodamani Pradhan, we did the Siddhan one, and Guruji did Tebata. So from Mahabharata, Ramayana and Ramayana, uh, all these three pieces. But when he was doing uh, Tebata, the people uh, in Italy, and it was very, uh, I mean, a lot of details in that item, but his acting uh, was incredible. I mean, everybody to understand. Uh, so even my father said that man is magic. He creates magic with, the, with his hands. <laughs> even lay people, because my father didn't. Uh, I mean, he was not. So so where, from where I started now, I lost the. <laughs> no, we, I, to show some of that, yes, if you, oh, can, okay, you nice. remember, yeah. And, and, and you say, then uh, apart from uh, Kevata, you say Draupadi. Yeah. So I think uh, you must be referring to Ahenila Soila. Uh, that Ahenila Soila is uh, the, uh, the devotee, uh, Muslim devotee who goes to, uh, who cannot enter into the Jagannath temple. And he asked the uh, Lord to, to come out and to come in his heart and to crush the pain in his heart in the same way like the elephants crush the um, lotus in the, in the lake. And to convince the God, he said three episodes where the God has already helped the devotees. 
One is the crocodile and the elephant, when the Lord killed the crocodile to save the elephant. And one is when Krishna gives the clothes to Draupadi in the day. So, so it must have been uh, probably what you saw. It must have been that that, that uh, episode. And the other one is the Brajokuchoro Asichi. Uh, that is a Vatsalya Rasa uh, Abhinaya, where uh, the mother is putting the child to sleep, and uh, she says, that if you don't sleep uh, from the village, when a thief will come and will take you away. If you don't sleep. Uh, I mean, she, she keeps on saying, when one, one big, one, uh, one big birds will come and will take him away. So he, he, she invents a lot of story to, to make him to sleep, and um, and finally, it, it, uh, it, he, she says, that you are my little, uh, you are beautiful like the moon, and uh, uh, the entire uh, um, village is silent, and you are not tired to, to roam around and to play all around. And at the end, both the mother and after cajoling him and after jumping here and there, both of them, they fall asleep. And at that point, uh, usually there is the clapping and uh, then he, he will tell to the people not to clap because finally the, <laughs> the child is sleeping. So I think uh, usually that was the piece of the right. right. I, I remember the, I mean, the first time, of course, I saw him uh, because I had given up my flying career in ninety, in ninety four, I think, in um, in uh, where was it? Uh, in Verona, uh, there was a, I don't know if you were there in Verona. There was Pandit Budhadev Chattopadhyay did Kathak. Um, Elena used to be there. Elena had organized something, and Keluda also came. Uh, we were all there. Um, 94. 94, I think. Yeah, 94, yeah, I think it was 94. It was in uh, Verona, there was a festival. That was, a, that was amazing, I mean, what he did even there in terms of even Abhinay, when he would, uh, whenever he came close to the front of the stage and sat down, it was all focused on, on his face and his hands. And it was, it was like he's ringing everyone, no? <laughs> It's just ringing. Yeah. He was very. Uh, he was magical. He's a rising person. When when he was coming to I he went with me in Italy quite a few times, and he was able to. All the girls were around around him. He was he was able to enchant everybody. Who God knows with those two few words of English, and he was able to talk about dance to a uh, driver to a. Uh, um, uh, Shopkeeper, to, he would start to talk about guns and about Jagannath, about the, God knows which kind of language, but he was very communicative actually. He was able to communicate a lot. So that he was, that attraction, the power of attraction was there. Uh, what was, uh, from how closely uh, you saw him uh, from both his scholars? Uh, I uh, view uh, from a uh, from an actor's eye view, from a you know from from a dancer's eye view, and a student's eye view. Uh, what was his idea of dance? What was dance for him? What was nritya to him, if you may? He, he, it was a sort of. Uh, Worship everywhere, every time. Uh, uh, I think everything is, everything was one for him. Lord Jagannath, worship, dance, uh, his commitment, dedication, devotion. Everything was one. There was no separation uh, among these things. So, so that's why he was convincing because um, he was actually. Whatever he was, his humbleness also. Uh, he was approachable. Every everybody could go directly to his bedroom. <laughs> he was doing something. He was always open uh, to everybody. He, no formalities. No, and always very conscious of the fact that he was not educated. So he was dealing with people who were in high position. So even he always that humbleness was there in him. Although he had reached. 
I mean, yeah. not yet rich, but uh, so that uh, and and the way and uh, because he came from the ground level and he came from from a lot of struggle, so he always uh, was, uh, for example, when he was doing all this uh, construction work in the house, all the mystery, the mason, and all this thing, he was one of them. Working with them, uh, putting with uh, mixing the teams, uh, um, uh, talking with them. I mean, there's no uh, different status of, uh, of the vision or anything. So he was mixing with everybody. So that was his quality. Uh, so, so it's it's a uh, it's a uh, when uh, so those. I mean, maybe they, they were they belong to another generation. <laughs> they belong to another time. In which uh, the, the, the genuinity of, uh, of uh, completeness of a, of a person, which uh, uh, and, and the struggle of his life. I mean, uh, uh, it, uh, but but in spite of that, he never uh, whatever he reached, whatever wherever he reached, uh, he didn't lose the contact with him from from the source, from where he came. And uh, he remained, he remained that. So he remained a man from uh, Puri, from that soil, from, from the soil. So, so that is uh, is. Uh, uh, what is what is dance in your words? Then I mean, uh, you've come a long way. You've seen and heard plenty. You've seen several dance forms. You've seen that uh, mere talk. I mean, from a psychoanalytical perspective when a singer or a player or a player of some instrument can roll his eyes, his or her eyes up and say music is the fastest way to salvation, but none of them ever attained salvation. They're all people seemed in egos, uh, ego manias and so on and so forth, competition. I've been in the Sangeet Natak, uh, in the executive, I've seen things from close, the upmanship, the firebrand, the uh, daggers at the back. <laughs> I've seen it all uh, and closely and for quite some time. Uh, how do you see uh, uh, that, yes, adaptation of the idea of dance, which was in the temples, things that were in, even in the Gurdwaras, there were many Mahants who were very corrupt, uh, uh, you know, temples and mosques and so on and so forth, churches. We've seen around the world, we've seen histories of uh, of exploitation one way or another. But even if we were to uh, leave all the corruption aside, uh, the adaptation of the pure idea of dance which happened in temples uh, or in sacred spaces onto the stage, uh, there is a clear divide. I mean, it, the stage is not a place of worship. It is an idea that is created and it's an artistic presentation. Uh, how do you see uh, dance in the temple that you would have seen and as you've studied and it, you know, um, tried to learn from the scriptures and working with scholars who interpreted what used to happen, what was the idea of sanctity within dance, what is the idea of sacred, of devotion, of worship in dance, and then the adaptive reuse, if I may, on the stage. How do you see it, uh, it all, and what therefore is dance for you, and why dance? See, where we are now, this is my temple. So I don't see that division because I don't go to the temples. So for me, this is my temple. So. Uh, if I go from the historical point of view, then I, of course, then I can tell you about the past and all these things, and uh, uh, that is. It. But as an experience, whenever I come down from the, the upstairs and I enter into this room, I, I mean, if I have any problem or anything, it goes away. I mean, this is a temple for me. So, and. Uh, uh, is a prayer because like everybody needs to pray every day, I need to dance every day. Uh, so I don't pray in another way. Uh, I don't do rituals other than this. So it became uh, uh, one. So that uh, division from temple to stage, I don't uh, leave it uh, 
actually in that way. Also because maybe because um, I'm, I'm forbidden to go to the temples. I cannot enter because so so maybe I don't. You're know. a woman and you're white. Yeah. I know. So I don't have that problem to to dichotomy for me. This is yeah. So yes. Um, but then, of course, uh, this is my experience, which is quite in a way <laughs> unusual. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, of course, otherwise uh, we know very well that um, it became uh, a different, uh, totally different uh, things. But then, it, it's uh, whatever it was. But whatever it was means uh, again, I I was in touch with, uh, I was being adopted by one of the. Uh, Last Mahari Madhivadasi, which were in, uh, but very strangely, I um, uh, it was in 81, 82 when I started my first research, and I was going to Har and uh, um, Puri, and uh, I wrote down everything. Um, I never asked her much about uh, the dance. I I was more interested to 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 know about uh, uh, the rituals and. Uh, uh, so I was curious to to to, to know all uh, what was actually their routine and their rituals, what, what kind of things they were doing in those rituals, and how the temple because I couldn't enter into the temple. So, 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 it, so her experience of dance, what she was feeling inside the temple, I don't know. Each of them they must have felt differently. So when we talk about uh, uh, dance in the temples, God knows for each of them how it was. It is a very individual experience. And also for the on the stage, all of us are, are living this uh, this experience in a different way. Like Guruji, as I said, he, for him uh, was his, uh, his uh, from where he's, he, he he was born there, and he was uh, uh, he it was an expression of his own uh, from the soil from where it ori originated. I came from a totally another land, and for me it is a different. So it's, it's a transformation. It's a, but as far as worship is concerned, there is a, certain elements which are, according to me, persisting, either is on the temple or outside. And uh, it is a, a commitment and a, a things which you have to do. Um, every day that practice that sadhana that uh, which which the, the, the dance and any art is, uh, is uh, demanding and uh, requiring and uh, so that is something which is uh, permanent apart from that all the uh, illusion and disillusion and uh, jealousy and politics and uh, pushing and uh, uh, breaking the legs and uh, pull, pulling legs and all these things maybe is part of life and it is there in the other spheres. So, of course, I, it's not easy and you can imagine I am in a, in a land from where I didn't, I was not born here, so I don't have any protector or anything, so um, I had to face a lot of um, all these other, other aspects which are around the dance. But, uh, because not, because it's such a necessity for me to dance and uh, and uh, such a fulfilling experience the dancing itself that I could face all these things and be still strong, <laughs> not be uh, I mean, destroyed by by many negative things which which uh, and also we provoke those because maybe. Uh, sometimes I feel I also should be a little more accommodating, a little more uh, compromising, a little more <laughs> to to please people. But I'm not like this, so I, I so I also maybe provoke things. And also the fact that I am not from here, it also create. If, I mean, there are so many aspects uh, of the things, but it never doesn't never uh, never uh, uh, make me wave or wavering in my, in my uh, commitment to dance. And I never had any regret. Uh, and the fact that I learned from Guruji was a strong point because uh, uh, I got a very solid uh, um, knowledge from, from him. So, so that is a, a, a very uh, solid point on which uh, I can work on it. So what... Uh... What is, what is, do you have 
any any um, end to the <laughs> oh, we 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 the evening is just <laughs> evening is young yet <laughs> yeah i think i i i have to go and give some uh, what, uh, ingredients for uh, for uh, for cooking for the night <laughs> Uh, we're gonna keep you. We're gonna keep you hungry today. Don't worry. <laughs> so uh, let's. Uh, I mean, I don't know how. If there no, is no. a steam, anybody will. Oh no, they are there. My batches run to the longest has been nine and a half hours. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and there, there are many, many mad people. We are. I'm not the only mad one hosting. There are also mad ones who've been hosted. and the mad ones who've been watched who've been watching every one of them <laughs> and and some who watch many times over because there's some beautiful things that come out insights because the series is again with achievers and people who have uh, uh, you know who have been carved sculpted out of nowhere by some of the great masters so they have a story to tell there's always something exciting that comes out so you do it every day uh well i did uh, 99 without a break uh wow. and then uh, now because i'm down to writing and doing other works i'm doing two to four batches every week now yeah yeah and this is the 148th one since yeah yeah you told me since, yes, yeah so uh, and these are not one hour so imagine i have already logged maybe more than 500 hours of conversations <laughs> uh so to uh, i want to slowly approach to uh uh, uh to to sharnam your the little clip that you have shared with us but uh, i my question to you was again uh, uh about dance i mean what is if i as a as a lay person to understand what is dance if you to tell me what dance is uh what does it do to you uh why do you like you mentioned about the temple that this is your temple and uh, in spite of the handicaps that that there are outside of your temple walls uh that you come back each time and you mention that when you enter it everything else remains outside it is just you and yourself uh you know so tell me i want to uh, what is dance what is it see dance is what you see when you when i dance what you see that is it's very difficult to to uh, to explain what it is but i i i feel that what you are you cannot uh, conceal it uh, you cannot hide it when you dance so your nature even the 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 one which uh, uh, maybe you are not even uh, aware of but it will, it is there it is you are exposing yourself it is you are like naked i mean uh, you know, of course you are all dressed up and make up and these things but still as far as your nature is you are it is like you you got so so it's uh, the, the real uh, core of of your personality is coming that uh, you dance so when you ask what is dance for you i can only say just watch me when i dance and you know <laughs> what it is yeah and then of course there are all the technical aspects uh, somebody is betala then somebody who do, do mistakes sometimes you are not totally i mean every 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 performance and every the representation is is different uh, depends on the flow which you have depends on the climate it goes but still there is something which is transparent which is you can see and and that is is, uh, is what is dance for each of us which is coming it is also for example you talk of concealing or being naked or what you are is what you see but when you do abhinay you are also learning to be that which you are not it is about also about i mean one is to uh, one that you bring your nature onto the sacred space that you create but then you're also becoming the other you're becoming the patra the supatra you're uh, you're dying you're you're allowing that ability to 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 sort of kill uh, one's own self and merge into the self you're about to create how is that process uh, for you uh, like process. you like you showed like you radha 
uh, whether it is the humble and the hurt radha the one with with pride you know who's conscious that she is what she is but she is hurt and she has to tell but not tell in a in a in a in a hurtful banner so you're becoming radha at that moment you're thinking about being that yeah, because there is something of radha which uh, it is uh, in, in us and uh, and uh, in each, uh, i like for example that particular things that uh, she has the uh, she has the, the dignity to reject him with dignity but she has the force to to reject so that that means maybe if you analyze that why that that particular aspect is interesting me so much maybe because um, sometime i am not able to to do that in life so sometime i would like to uh, to to re- refuse something because uh, or to reject something but i i i compromise or uh, i am afraid to lose that uh, Or that particular situation. So maybe I'm not. So there, there are many aspects which, which one can analyze. Uh, what is uh, which attracts? In all these are all the, um, characters which um, uh, like uh, there is a Calabria. A Calabria. I choose that character and I ask Guruji to compose for me that particular piece. He has composed it only for me. Nobody else is dancing that particular piece. so so that devotion uh, to the guru why it must be okay everybody can be fascinated by that story but but why i choose that then i can uh, when i choose i didn't uh, think why i'm choosing but if some but i can analyze it later uh, so uh, yeah it was for me it was a completely surrender to 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 to, to guru but nobody imposed me to do it. to do that uh, it, 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 so if if somebody would have imposed me to surrender to the guru i would have rebel that is why in the before coming here in my previous uh, i was yeah incarnation it, i was rebelling because it was uh, it was imposed on me to to go to church it was imposed to me to 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 to, to do this and that once i came here If many people ask how you are rebelling against that and that and that and then you can hear and say, yeah, because here nobody imposed on me to 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 to, to surrender to this tradition. I uh, so so it's um, so it's everything uh, what whatever you dance and the way you choose the characters you choose and the way you are more attracted towards one or the other or something comes better to you then you can always think analyze what kind of yourself it's uh, compensated or you find in the home this or maybe is lacking in you that's why it uh, it attracts you i mean this is a process which one can do yeah. other person uh, maybe because i come from that kind of analytical uh, way but other person can just say no because uh, it is lord krishna and uh, radha is the devotee to him i mean if somebody has an upbringing of of uh, of, that, of that type it, it, she sees all the krishna and radha which are in inner in themselves already enough i mean if if uh, there is no need no no need to go beyond or uh, so there are many way to to Right, right. So tell us about Sharanam uh, that you that we are going to show next about this project. Sharanam is uh, yeah the, the idea uh, how it came. Uh, these are the three ladies, three um, uh, three uh, yeah three, uh, women uh, from three different relig- religion. Um, one is Mary Magdalena. Uh, now actually i just finished working on three different women uh, so uh, i have to go back to sarena and then now my last choreography just i recorded yesterday it is in another three uh, story so this was uh, sarena uh, mari magdalena then there is pingala and there is uh, um, the middle varna um, i got it doesn't come you know pingala shushmana 
from Buddhism, uh, um, the devotee of uh, Buddha. I see. Right. Anyway, so there are three are uh, three uh, different uh, from the different religions with the same message because uh, three of them were courtesan or prostitute, but three of them have found their self-realization and surrendering to their own God, to which one is Jesus, one is Buddha, and one is the Krishna. Pingala is from the uh, Bhagavata Purana, and uh, uh, so she is a prostitute who is waiting for her client, the, the client is not coming, and uh, she realizes that the entire life she has gone uh, behind all these material things and she has remained with nothing with, uh, in, 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 in hand. And finally she realizes that her real lover is in her, already in herself, she doesn't have to wait for others to come. So Mary Magdalena is uh, uh, the, in the Christian religion, he, she was a, um, she became a devotee of, uh, of, uh, of Jesus, but she was a prostitute and uh, she, she Jesus, when the people wanted to uh, throw stone to her, uh, Jesus said, Whoever among you is without sin, throw the first stone. So everybody went away. So in front of that, Mary uh, surrendered to, to him and he accepted her as a disciple. So, and then the, the, the second one is uh, the God. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have to analyze why he doesn't come now. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Anyway, I can I can say. Let me do the wide angle. We can do we can have a look at the abhinay of you feeling really no, furious not being able to. <laughs> no, uh, I I think I've sent the I don't remember if I sent the first portion or the second portion. I see. Because there are three different. No, I am. That's because I just finished as I said the three women which are which are uh, 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 taking their own revenge. Uh, so uh, anyaya and injustice. Uh -huh. So I, I just finished that, that thing. So Sarana now belongs to the past. I can't remember the second one. Anyway, you can go ahead. I, it will come to my mind. Okay. So here we show. Uh, we'll show the Sharanam now. <laughs>
that was wow that's like really fantastic this was in 2011 at the festival the mukteshwar festival ah, okay yeah. uh, so yes go ahead i mean i said you must have seen the beautiful uh, uh, yeah. setup <laughs> how how wonderful <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, the music you know uh, i see the uh, the mardal you know uh, the the uh, the pakhavaj the way they is played uh, the form of the mardanga um, the instruments in the odissi dance are not only native to odisha is it is not much of vernacular it's a mixed very eclectic uh, music arrangement so how does it uh, how are you See, doing that or or is a is a between north and south so it has right. got uh, influence from south and from north that is for sure in, uh, in music and as the media the thing but no martana is uh, totally uh, the 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 dropal part is different it's much bigger the martana proportions and the whole uh, that Uh, original from uh, from Orissa. It is different from the Vidanga and from the. Uh, originally, I mean, if we look at uh, when we look at the ancient Drupads, uh, uh, even in Punjab, uh, the Mardal, Mardang and Mardal, uh, for example, there is an ancient uh, Talwandi school, uh, uh, Khandarwani Drupad. Uh, ध्रुपदे so um then uh, of course flute uh, yes. usually we, we don't have apart from the mandala uh, of the other instrument which is used uh, violin flute and sitar these are common to all the, the, the pan pan indian yeah. instruments but the style of uh, of uh, play actually this is also a topic which is very uh, debatable because uh, recently um, in fact the chief minister of orissa has uh, asked uh, the, the center parliament to um, promote the uh, accept the odissi patahati style of music is the one of the classical uh, there is um, a lot of uh, the ground to it that there are a lot of actually um, the foundation uh, which foundation could be there but according to me they there has been too much gap and uh, between uh, the tradition which was there which was rich of a lot of uh, uh, literatures of 15th 16th century we have gita prakasha or uh, sangita narayana sangita muktavali there are many literatures which talks about odissi Uh, raga, which are different from uh, even the name, the structure, and all these things from uh, Hindustan or Karnataka. But uh, but uh, uh, then at a certain point, the influence from uh, especially from the north, I suppose, from the Hindustan uh, style, got uh, mixed up, and uh, and the traditional raga has been a little bit. Uh, so many of the they, they are still alive. the songs in the way of singing the chantu the the chotisha the 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 jana the bhajana and all these things of those so but if you ask uh, many of the musicians which raga is this the original odissi raga they are not able to do this so this is a much 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 many mix up of this and that so it's it's a little bit shaky i am convinced that uh, the base for uh, plasticity of the odissi music is there the research on this has to be done more to uh, to re- recover 
that uh, link with the, with the tradition which was there, but it has been uh, too many um, historical uh, uh, appeal uh, happening on this. Right. So um, the dance somehow could survive through this uh, link of a little bit of the Devadasi, which also disappeared at a certain point. The Kutikwa, the boy, which the Vaishnavism, uh, Vaishnavism was very uh, strong, so the Devadasi was substituted by this boy, which is called Kutikwa, uh, dancing like that. So, but in some way, somehow, some uh, pocket of, uh, of uh, fragment of dance survived, and of course, the revival and the uh, effort of all these uh, pioneers, gurus, and all these things uh, 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 rediscover, restructure. With the music, the process is slower. Although uh, some musicologists are there which are trying, there is not enough uh, unity within them, among them. And, uh, and uh, probably also there should be some more uh, uh, research as, uh, and, and uh, in-depth research and also to, to be able to uh, propose it, to, to, to perform it, uh, to, to, I mean, the, the, the plasticity is also uh, demonstrated when one, uh, on itself, when one is uh, uh, proposing and showing it, uh, the, the, it is, uh, in itself it becomes um, uh, proof that is nothing. So that process is still going on. So whatever we are using in Odyssey dance, uh, many of the compositions which are of the last uh, century, are of the 70s and 80s of the last century, um, are uh, in radas which are mostly Hindustani, some also some Carnatic. But uh, there is this uh, uh, this revival of uh, trying to uh, recover the original Odyssey Raga, which, which is still in process. So, so the composition, for example, of the Gita Gurinda, uh, they are mostly uh, Raga, Raga Nadez, Bahadi, or uh, Chankatan, so the whole Ragas which are uh, in this time. They, they, uh, Composers who, who are uh, who mainly proposed for the Uchara Mahapatra, the major composer was Bhubaneshwar uh, Mishra, who was actually uh, training uh, in this kind of music. But then we had Raghunath Panikai, of course, was uh, also uh, in a very uh, exponent of the Abhid Govinda. He, is, um, he was also knowing the Carnatic music. So it's uh, is always a, a mixture of influence in Odisha because of the, of the geographical position also, of course, because it is actually in between. So, and, uh, and, and because of all, uh, so it's a, it's a rich a rich state of uh, in culture, in all aspects of culture. Um, maybe not many people uh, outside Odisha know enough of it. Sometimes when, when I go out, People are surprised. Some people in India they have never come to Odisha. They, 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 uh, they, they have never visited Odisha, or uh, they, they are surprised that they are staying here. Uh, it's not known uh, enough uh, the, the richness of, of this uh, of this state in painting, in architecture, in uh, literature, and uh, so, so so much is there. Uh, and maybe the people here should be a little more uh, aggressive in uh, promoting. So. I, uh, you know, I uh, had a very um, sort of extensive interaction with Pandit Ramari Das. Um, uh, he was uh, in the Sangeet Natak Academy as well, in the General Council, and, and we uh, we were in the music committee, different committees together. And one of the things, I mean, you talk of Odisha, post-partition, my battle as a conservator has been to uh, wake India up because Punjab, where I come from, is the land of Vedas, which are studied everywhere. Um, uh, according to Professor Kamlesh Datta Tripathi and many others, but him in particular, who said it at the Brahad Deshi, uh, organized by Sangeet Nair Academy way back, I mean, 20 years back, when Sharapuri Mukherjee was still there, that Natya Shastra was originally written, actually written in Punjab, 
that people have taken it away and tried to appropriate it different places, be it in the south or other parts of the country. Uh, Rig Veda is written between Satluj and Vyas, as I was mentioning the other day. It has only mention of two rivers, which is Satluj and Vyas. Vibhasa is the name, Rag Vibhas is coming, is the name on the river. Punjab and Odisha, among many other traditions, was one, um, one of the two, or uh, two of those which were never honored post partition when the integration of uh, Union of States was being formed. Nobody knows now. Legends are known, but people don't know what happened in the West, for example. When you look at the Pakhavish tradition of Punjab, which is, they say theoretically they know always the oldest and the original, uh, you know, uh, didn't take influence from anywhere, but excuse me, beyond that they don't know. When they look at histories, they go to Lala Bhavani Das two centuries ago. They say that's when Pakhavaj began, but excuse me, the mention of Pakhavaj with the Guru Nanak, it was born 550 years ago. At least we know when my family, my ancestor was a direct disciple of Guru Nanak. We've had music for five and a quarter centuries and the Pagni Nasi, so you don't get to bullshit with me. So I've got histories, what do you want to know? So I've been sort of pushing back on that. And with Ramani Das Ji and I, when we were talking, and we were in uh, Dalhousie, hosted by Shanta Sarbjit Singh, who's right and a you know, wife of uh, one of the legendary painters, Sarbjit Singh, who painted the Himalayas. Me and, uh, you know, I was talking, I said, oh, you know, we still have the chant singing. And Ramani Dasri said, oh, really, how do you sing? And I sang, uh, the first one I think I sang was in uh, one rare version of Tukhari. I And with the seven beats, the last four lines are sung with the four beats. The first two lines are sung in the uh, 16 beats, and it's a Kundliya Chan. Ghol Gumai Lalana Gurmanadina Sunasabad Dumara Tumara Mera Manabhina. The last three words of the second line begin the second section of this Pada, this Chant. Mera Manabhina Jojalabina Lagaranga Murara Kimat Kahina Jai Thakur Tera Mahal Apara Sagal Guna Ke Date Swami Bino Suno Ik Dina Deho Dara Sananak Balehari Jira Bali Bali Kina Guru, Guru Arjun's Chant. When I sang it, he says, Oh, in Odisha we also sing chants. And I had thought that everybody in South Asia has forgotten the singing of chant. And I discovered in what, 2011 or 2010 when we were writing the music, uh, you know, vision for 2020, vision for music for the entire Ministry of Culture, Sangeeta Academy, which I ended up drafting with the music part. And we were discovering, he discovered that we, the, you know, in the Gurbani Sangeet tradition, we still sing chant 
and I discovered in 2010 that in Odisha, classical music of Odisha, chant singing still lives. And you know, it is such a pity that the vernacular, the regional, uh, uh, you know, riches has not been honored. India never got explored after 47. Just a few Rampur or uh, Gwalior or Delhi Mughal court uh, became Hindustani music. Yeah, and uh, Karnataka Sangeet and Gurbani, for example, is 24 languages, 120 dialects. Bhagat Jayadev is the oldest author of Guru Granth Sahib. Imagine, oldest author of Guru Granth Sahib, Jaya Jayadev. Kabir is there, Namdev is there, Ravidas, Namdev is from Maharashtra. Bhagat Ramandir is from Chennai area who lived in Varanasi. He is the uh, second oldest Bhagat uh, in the Gurbani. The kind of richest singing of Ikpade, Dopade, Tepade, Chapade, Panchpade, Ashtpade, Solhe and the Tuke and Chant and so on and so forth has not been mapped and some of the greatest exponents died post partition in the 50s, 60s and 70s and 80s and Bhai Arjan Singh Tarangad born 1900 last five years he taught me and produced me built my spine died in 1995 and it's Similar is the story with Odisha, what you're touching upon. And I think I'm glad that the Chief Minister of Odisha has made, uh, you know, the request. Our Chief Ministers in Punjab have been sleeping beauties. They are so ignorant and so full of, I don't know, whatever, uh, you know, uh, illusion that they've never even interacted, never introspected, never searched, never sought out by way of the ministries of culture. I don't know what they've been doing except taking salaries for all these 75, 80 years, they've never even mapped the length and breadth of Punjab. How much it is given to South Asia and beyond by way of its scriptures, by way of its musical concepts, Vandi and Choti, Tintalar Punjabi constructs everybody in the world plays. Imagine. And you are, you know, uh, right now, for example, you're talking of two pillars of their own kind. Jagannath Puri, Guru Nanak visited there, right? I'm coming, you know, from the ancient, uh, one of the oldest uh, memory uh, bearer uh, traditions from Punjab. I think so much needs to be done. And it, is a, it has been a disservice from him, speaking even musicologically. And okay, let me add the anthropological and archaeological perspective to it. It has been a disservice. And I said that this is actually murdering the cultural riches and wealth of uh, South Asia. Uh, when we have not studied it honestly, we have not had any academic integrity and, you know, semantic precision. We have not chased drag forms. Uh, we have not chased the tal structures. Uh, for example, Keluda, Kelu Charanda was performing in, uh, in the India International Center. Uh, you know, he was playing the Mardal uh, himself. When he started playing the, uh, you know, uh, you know, let me, let me, uh, how can I show? Let me, uh, let me bring it here. Oh, I've not, never done this before. <laughs> oh, people used to have, uh, people used to have the drums in the godi. I've never had the jodi in my godi. This is uh, talking of the accordion the other day. I was checking with the, Alexander Selivanov uh, from Moscow, from the Nessus Academy. How heavy is the accordion? He said it's 15, 16 kilos. Well, uh, my Jodi is over 22 kilos. So, um, so uh, I know a bit. Huh? I'm the head of the oldest school of drums of South Asia, the oldest living tradition, which is five centuries plus. So the, uh, he was playing something and I said, oh, you know, you are playing the, this is Punjabi folk. So, Gendu Katta. Gendu Katta. Ah. It's not the. Anyway. So, I uh, hope you can see. See all, everybody. So, I was amazed to see. The, it's Punjab.
He hugged me like nobody has ever hugged me. And we discussed about <laughs> this pattern. I said, oh, what were you playing? This is, you know, uh, the, the Punjabi Pakhavaj took it from the Punjabi folk. And this is the Ghedu Katta. Then we Kata. have uh, Ghedu Nat. Uh, then we have the Dhumma Keta. Then we have the, I mean, uh, we have four different uh, Nikas patterns. And me and Professor S.K. Saxena would discuss this. And the so-called musicologists of the last 40, 50, 60, 70 years did nothing but only talk about what they knew. The ministries of culture need to have a pan-Indian perspective. They need to explore the length and breadth of the country, map it. Then come the birds, the migratory birds, the, the wanderer world birds. Oh, look, let's sift this. Oh, wonderful, I like this, I like this. At least prepare the table, create the buffet. That has been such a sad story, and I'm so glad that you touched upon that and that you shared that the Chief Minister of uh, uh, Odisha has made a request. And I yeah. hope these Punjabi, uh, you know, uh, uh, bums will, uh, you know, on a naughty note, will, uh, uh, you know, uh, unglue themselves from their power seats and do some actual work. <laughs> What do you think? I mean, did you ever imagine that something like no, that no. exists in Punjab? <laughs> no, no. But yeah, I mean, I, I never imagined, but I, I believe so. I think these two uh, classification of Hindustan and Karnataka has it's, killed it's, all the other possibilities. Yes. <laughs> so it has petrified, uh, blocked. <laughs> yeah. And then Rabindra, we have Karnataka Sangeet, we have Hindustani Sangeet, then we have uh, Rabindra Sangeet. That's it. That's, oh. the, that's the A to Z of India. That's India, that's Hindustan, Maddai, Makifa, <laughs> as the Neapolitan would say. And uh, so, uh, tell us about uh, the refugee uh, excerpt. Uh, so, refugees, uh, see, it was starting before, it was such a uh, topic. Uh, uh, so, uh, it was, I mean, at least uh, maybe more than in India, in Europe. Uh, that it was in the front page every day in the newspaper. All this uh, number of people who are trying to cross the the, the Mediterranean and uh, try to, to land in the, uh, in the south of Italy or in Greece, in Greece and then walking and walking without knowing uh, where they will be accepted and being refused everywhere. And uh, but still. Uh, uh, with the hope in their mind, and, and this caravan of people and these uh, oversized boats uh, with all these small boats with so many overcrowded and, and, and uh, the, the refusal of, 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 uh, of them being able to, to land. And so all these things uh, was in my mind and uh, I thought uh, I, have, I want to do something on it and uh, so it was, uh, yeah, it was not an easy subject yeah. to, to to transform, and as I, as I was saying, that uh, usually I start from the subject and then everything has to be constructed on it. Mm -hmm. I and mean, in here I structure and, and, and then I go to my point and I tell him, this is, this is the thing, and then I hope that he will uh, one day, one night <laughs> come up with something. And, um, and then finally I did it. Um, so, it is in Oriya, uh, whereas the place which the Sharanam had three languages. Mm -hmm. So the Amrapali... The yes, the name we were forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> but me and you so, both were forgetting, yes. Uh, so, uh, so it's... Um, but uh, one thing, for example, that um, I wanted to say, uh, I did it uh, in uh, 2018 uh, for the Sangam Festival of 2018. Last year I did Megaduta. So the previous year I did Refugee. And, uh, and then I was invited to, the, usually my festival is in September. Then in December I was uh, uh, invited to perform for the Konarka Dance Festival. And uh, I knew I would, I would get into uh, controversies, but, uh, not controversies, but I was exposed by choosing this particular subject to present in Konarka. And, uh, but it was interesting because, okay, uh, as expected, uh, the dance critics, all three of them, 
right now the same thing that uh, that was not the place where to present uh, oh. the subject. Okay. Yeah. Because people are going to to, to see uh, Krishna and, and, and Shiva and Radha over there. No, not really like this, but I mean, uh, this is what they want. They meant to say that the uh, expectation. But on the contrary, I got so many uh, feedback uh, from people, from normal people, and messages because I thought it is a message which I'm giving through this, and, and this is an occasion for me to be sure, to be see, to, to that so many people will see because it is a telecast uh, live with the Konaka Festival. So people sitting in America and see, they can see where I get another occasion. After all, we don't have so many occasions to, to, to show our, our, yeah. our, 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 so once I get into it, and uh, so in fact, a lot of messages, I said, my God, finally we saw something which made us, made us thinking. And uh, somebody was telling me, oh, something which it, it, uh, it uh, touches us because we are also a sort of um, um, a migrants. And, uh, somebody said, no, these stories are, are, are very... Uh, so all this reaction, which I would not have got if I probably would have shown uh, something uh, more uh, expected. <laughs> so one of the usual uh, things. So, um, so I, I was happy to have done it, although I got the expected reaction of the... <laughs> <laughs> so, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm quite used to it. Yeah. So. For me, it is poignant because Punjab, for example, again uh, suffered the wrath of, uh, uh, you know, the forced uh, migration in 1947 during the partition of country, the mayhem, the killing, the rape, the looting, uh, the forced conversions. People converted just to escape. Uh, they tried to become that they were not. Uh, so all of these traumas people have and Punjabis still have that memory. Um, uh, then recently, uh, when you saw during the COVID times, now um, just to ask you a question, you did the refugee thing. Uh, we, when we look at refugees in the recent uh, decades, uh, last 20, 25 years since the Gulf crisis and so on and so forth, we've seen, uh, you know, uh, refugees, uh, you know, going from here, there, during the militancy period in Punjab, we have had many people who have been refugees, political asylum, etc., in the West. So we've all been, uh, uh, you know, aware of the political uh, uh, sort of chaos, which has led to uh, forced migration or migration, which are one way or other people becoming refugees, traveling. But this year, during the COVID crisis in India, we saw uh, in utter shock and disbelief the. I mean, Indians becoming, I mean, they were refugees. They were walking the kind of migration that was happening without people walked and died uh, in their, uh, you know, uh, uh, walk the kind of looting. I mean, so much that happened. I don't have to, we are all worse with that. How do you see this work of yours in, in, in current light? I mean, we are about to show like, uh, it's 2020, October 19th. Uh, how do you see this, this choreography of yours, this work of yours? I don't know, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe now this particular uh, type of refugee, which was so much uh, present and so much in our other uh, in front of our eyes before the COVID, <laughs> now it has been a little bit, but it, it still continue. But but maybe it is not so much more in the front front page of the of the newspaper. Now the, the one other migration, the, the return of the migrants. From one state to another, you are, you are referring to that, which happened during the, the during the last five five months, six months. That you are you are are you referring to that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yes, the, this movement of but is a little bit different in the sense that uh, these people uh, are returning home, mm. and uh, I don't know uh, if they have a home to whom to return. What what more? Uh, uh, was uh, appealing to me and more, more, more making me reacting it was the fact that these people they don't know their destination they don't know where they are going yes. to finish and where they will be accepted and they are keeping on moving without uh, without knowing if, if, if at all they will reach a place where they can call their home and they have left everything behind and yeah. they will not be able to, to, to go there so so this this kind of, uh, of uh, 
this is what was what making me anxious and uh, I mean to to react and to be uh, to so. Yeah, this uh, this is, a, I mean, for example, this year we saw a different kind of regu refugee. People who were working, they'd gone out for work, they became refugees there. And they were yeah. now trying to go back home. Here, uh, the one, in, you know, because this is a previous production from, uh, you know, before the COVID-19 COVID struck. Uh, it, it is the idea of leaving home and going away, taking refuge somewhere else. But but the idea is still uh, the same, and I'm reminded of Ramanjit, uh, uh, her work when she did for Radhita Ratan, Ratnam's project. It was a two-minute thing about uh, the whole strife under the. I mean, she did shot about two minutes under the table. Uh, it's about food, about the table, and so on and so forth. So I think uh, uh, it's sort of your the idea that it's a uh, to do with the refugee. It evokes and brings to memory. So much from 47, 1947 to 1984, uh, you know, 1990s, you know, uh, yes. So shall we show that uh, small excerpt of yours, yeah? <laughs> Love 
So we come to uh, some of the comments that we have. I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Eliana. Is your microphone on or off? Mine? Oh, yeah, now it is there. Yeah, it's fine. I was not able to hear you earlier. So uh, uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, Ramanjit Kaur uh, first wrote saying, beautiful gestures. Heartfelt emotions, grace personified, dear Vidushi Ilyana Chitaristi. That, that's nice. Uh, so, um, and then we have the Vidya Singh Lamba, Satkartar, thank you very much for joining. Niru Mathur, ciao Ilyana, bravissima. Niru Mathur, uh, she, she's talking to you in Italian already. Huh? <laughs> and uh, oh, so Nanda Sharma says, uh, uh, Namaskar Baldeep ji. Well, namaskar back, so Nanda. Uh, Namaskar Ilyana ji, great to see you here at the Batak. Looking forward to seeing some graceful gestures of Odissi dance today. Well, uh, Sunanda, we also saw some ungraceful ones because she demonstrated the ungraceful ones which are edited out, not kept. <laughs> with the Radha, which gesture to keep, which is not right to keep. So we also saw the ungraceful ones, <laughs> but those which are edited out. So anyway, thank you <laughs> for joining Sunanda. And, uh, but it's been wonderful, in fact, to, to, to see the theater, dance, combination, actor. I mean, it's, it's, that's been a very, very nice uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, thing for me to see. Uh, Dhrupadiya, Shailendra Kumar Pathak, Janab, joining. Uh, that's wonderful. Good to see you. Bhavindra Singh Arora, Asha Pathak, the granddaughter of uh, Pandit Siya Ram Tiwari from Patna. That's lovely to see you. Uh, and of course, um, uh, Ramanjit is welcoming a few people. Rajshri uh, Chintak Behra, uh, the, you know, she is also joining. Wonderful. Kamal Beer Singh, the violinist uh, maestro, and a dear, uh, uh, you know, he's like a cousin of mine from England, saying, glad to see that Indian arts are getting so popular abroad and artists from other countries uh, taking this art so seriously and achieving prestigious awards like Padma Shri. Uh, that's. Uh, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, I'm re reminded of uh, 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 Ustad Praimuddin Khan of the Dagurwani uh, style of Dhrupad singing. Um, he would tell me of uh, Francis, who was a student of Mia Tansen from France and who almost won the competition after Tansen's death to become the head of the tradition, to, to actually get the pagri of... Uh, 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 you know, Tansen until uh, Ustad Bilas Khan, the son of Tansen, sang in uh, Bilas Khani Todi, Hey Gange Saral Baho, the very famous Dhrupad, which very few people now remember. But he became, you know, so proficient and came so close to becoming the actual Vidyatmak heir to Mia Tansen. So, this journey, the idea of travel, as I mentioned earlier, is an old story. Uh, so, it's, it's, uh, it's just another folio, uh, you know, of another traveler, another story of a traveler coming and becoming, uh, uh, you know, an exponent and a bearer, knowledge bearer of the, one of the South Asian art forms. Ramanjit says, uh, I'm always in awe of those who in search of their artistic and spiritual pursuits leave their lands of birth and acquire a new identity, in new lands and contribute so richly to the cultural tapestry of their newfound quote unquote home. Salute to you, Vidushi Ilyana Chitaristi. Uh, and Puno Mayu from Islamabad was, of course, asking earlier when we were showing, I think, the first uh, excerpt uh, of, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, Narcissus, uh, when she was asking, is this the demonstration of Mayur Bhanj? Uh, that was, which was true, it was Mayur Bhanj Chao. Jasmeet Kaur, welcome to you and thank you for saying, complimenting very nicely rendered. Um, and of course, Manjali Sinaji's uh, uh, comment about being the perfect guest for Navratri, I've already read earlier. Uh, Deepa Mehrotra is writing, oh, Dr. Samit Malik, uh, uh, Pandit Ram Kumar's Malik's son and the grandson of uh, Pandit Vidur Malik, 
of the Darbanga Dumrao School and of course the nephew of Pandit Prem Kumar uh, Malik uh, sending you flowers. Uh, that's so, so very sweet. Uh, Deepa Merotha writes, I feel so blessed BBSG. Oh, mustn't you be blessed? Of course. I spend like tens of hours before every uh, betak and you look at Ilyana, poor girl, you know, she's already fed up of me because it's been like 10 days that we've been, uh, I've been, <laughs> you know, we've been uh, banging our heads uh, through this internet thing. Anyway, I'm just joking. Uh, I feel so blessed with you that you introduced us to an Italian prodigy who excels in the Odissi Indian dance form. My head bows to this great cultural ambassador from India. That's beautiful, Deepa. Uh, oh yes, Manjri Sena was, I, I read your message, Manjri Ji, because you said, she said, this looks like a slow motion thing. So then I looked, I said, actually, you know, that's true. So we, I've disconnected and reconnected with uh, Ileana. I, I, I know that uh, visually I can see that it's much better than it was before, which is a pity, but technology, we are all in a lockdown and I'm sitting in, uh, you know, glued to my chair here and I've uh, got, I've, I've made Ileana the prisoner of a sacred temple for so many hours already. What, three hours and 24 minutes and running. Um, Aditi Bandopadhyay says, Ramanjit Kaur, I admire her a lot. Thank you. So thank you, Ramanjit, for inviting, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Aditi here and uh, glad that uh, she's already familiar with uh, Ileana's work. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, Ramanjit responding back saying, Aditi Bandhupadhyaya, she's epitome of inner and physical grace, thought and expression. Well, that's uh, Ileana, you're getting lots of praise, not me. Uh, and uh, Manjiriji is saying, um, uh, Bhaiji, you're talking about Savaiya and Araya, divisions of uh, a rhythmic cycle. Uh, that kind of terminology used to be prevalent in Kathak of older time guru, timer gurus. That's, uh, uh, thank you for that note. Yes, absolutely. Things have gone now. Um, people are, you know, more or less they talk of, uh, oh, Dusra Jati, Tisra Jati, Chasusra Jati, Khand Jati, Mishra Jati and Sakiran Jati. But people forget these are all generic. Uh, for example, if I am going uh, uh, in Tisar Jati, Takena Dhetata Ketaka Dhetata. Now, Takena Dhetata. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. But Ketaka Dhetata. Now, that's a multiple of three. So, it's a Mishra Jati within Tisar Jati. It's a blend. Adaptation of a particular Jati. Uh, became that. For example, if, uh, uh, what is this? This is uh, Bharadi Lai. Adi Lai and Bharadi Lai are all multiples of three. Uh, like, Takena Dhetata Kataka Dhetata 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 Now, these are multiples of three. Look at the swagger. The sway change is Kataka Dhetata 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 the in between is missing. Silent. Dhetata Dhetata Kataka Dhetata Kataka Dhetata Kataka Dhetata Kataka Dhetata so the one, two, one, two, one, three. These are all variants. Bharadla, na, dakai, dage, da ding, dakit, dakai, da di, dake, da di, dake, na da. All of these, yes, absolutely, these are all gone. People are so, now, if they, if they, it's, it's become so limited and so narrow. But I'm so glad that you mentioned about the old timer, um, uh, you know, maestros. Uh, Manji Sina writes, Ileana, not only Guruji had a way to get across, even you are communicating pretty well with a lot of love signs. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> see, Manjri Ji, and you are, uh, you see, I am only getting, uh, you know, in between. Uh, Sunanda Sharma <laughs> says, lovely special memories. Sunanda is writing, remembering beautiful compositions related with Odissi dance like Jai Jagadish Hare from Geet Govindam, Pallavi, uh, uh, Gyam Tadit, uh, Jham Tadit Jham, uh, Taim Tadit Jham. So she's remembering that. And uh, she says, beautiful, graceful costume, Benga Peti, Pool, and beautiful mudra of chalk. Uh, chalk is it? What, how? Chalk? Chalk. Chalk, okay. And she's saying, Kya Baat hai? Rajeshri Chintak Behra says, Ramanjit Kaur watching now. Welcome, welcome to the 
world of VR and our virtual Bedrock series, Rajeshree again. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we have Ranjit Singh Murjani saying a bravo, hello. And uh, Ramanjit says, beautiful Malhar, Bhai Baldeep Singh Ji, can I just sing it possible? Well, I, no, I'm not going to sing it. I just gave an excerpt because Ileana has allergy for, I mean, to my, I mean, she's allergic to my singing. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, <laughs> And uh, Sunanda says, uh, I got a chance to witness and listen to Odyssey Dance. Meantime, as I'm reading the comments, people, if you have any questions for uh, Dr. Ilyana Chitaristi, please, uh, you're welcome to write and I'll be able to look at them by the time I reach down. You're welcome to write your questions if you have any queries with regards to her theater background, with regards to studies in psychoanalysis and Eastern uh, mythology or with Odyssey Dance or uh, Mayur Bhang Chao. Uh, so Sunanda Sharma writes, I got a chance to witness and listen to Odissi dance and music in Kolkata from Dr. Sudha Datta, who is a do who's da daughter of Apaji, that is uh, Vidushi Girija Devi, and disciple of Pandit Kelucharan Mahabhatra Ji. Love the compositions and everything about this Nritya. Really rich mudras. Uh, so amazing to see Nritya by dear Ilyana. And she says, oh, she, oh, then she says, aha, kya baat, Pai Baldeep Ji. Oh, thank you very much, Sunanda. So, I take uh, all, the, all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing belongs to my teachers, you see. So uh, it was all, see, it, my naughty note is, if I hadn't come to my teachers, you know, what would they have taught to me? <laughs> so they're going to thank me that I came to study <laughs> from them. I'm just teasing them. They know that I love them much. Uh, Ramanjit says, uh, post-independence restoration of Indian culture has been erratic and sadly we lost some of the richest of ancient cultures and art forms. Saddest being the story of Punjab which was attacked innumerable times by various invaders and yes, post-independence conservation of uh, ancient music compositions has been non-existent, especially Gurbani Sangeet, uh, hence the work of conservation of uh, ancient uh, uh, music. I think this, uh, I, I don't see the full message here. I only see as much. Oh, Rosella has joined. Rosella, we were remembering you. Uh, says, Ciao, Ileana and Baldeep. Thanks for sharing. Looking forward to meet with you. Yes, of course. We very spoke of you at the very beginning. Uh, you want to say hello to Rosella? Yeah, very soon, very soon. She's in contrast to Presto. Let's see. Volta Presto, see. Uh, Divya um, uh, Suvarna says, looking forward to an interesting interaction, of course, yes. Uh, uh, thank you all for your comments and, uh, you know, for joining us. Talking of uh, uh, mudras, um, how do you see, uh, uh, before I, you know, I know that I've requested you for something and you're going to share an excerpt of an ashtpa, uh, one Ashtpadi. Uh, before we end, uh, so that everyone knows that I requested uh, Ileana. She's very kindly agreed, in spite of being fed up of me. Uh, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> she's like wanting to murder me, kill me, uh, for, for keeping up, uh, you know, keeping her uh, so late. But I'm like that. Uh, I get away with murder. This time I'm going to get away with kidnapping. I know you the last, uh, the last, last topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not repeating it <laughs> because uh, uh, anyway the, the idea of mudras uh, how do you see um, um, the mudra or abhinay as in uh, odissi dance versus you already had the first interaction I mean introduction was to kathakali which is very intense and very, I mean, it's on eyes where you don't have to even blink for, I don't know, <laughs> for eternity. Uh, and so much expression. How do you see uh, uh, Abhinay and the use of mudras in Odissi uh, versus uh, other dance forms? Well, I think uh, there is what we call pravruti. In a sense, the sense that everything is connected. Is, 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 uh, so if you uh, in, in Orissa it seems everything is on round and circular and, uh, and uh, uh, andolita and it goes so even when we uh, go to, to to form a mudra it's never straight. I see. It's I mean if I have to, to do the Krishna mudra it's not like this. It's, 
So the hands will go and then complete. So, uh, so if everything is, if this has to go and in brass, it, it goes like this. Ah, it's not like this. And uh, alas, uh, indolent. So that uh, the Tribhangi, Abhanga, it's a, it's a Tribhangi is a um, Tribhangi Choka, as somebody was talking about. So uh, Tribhangi is very uh, relaxing type of, uh, of position in which one hip is one side and they, 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 they torsing the other, and the other side. And, and uh, so everything is uh, um, very soft. Very fluid. And, very and fluid, it's like... Political and soft. And that is also, you find it in the song, in the music, in the nature of the people, and, um, and also in the writing, as I said, the, the writing of Brisa is all around, and the, 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 the small child is, has to start with, the, to do a, a, a circle for, for, uh, for learning the first letter, the uh, BCD. So, so everything is, so the, in the dance also is like this. And uh, so that is uh, the gracefulness, the lyricism, and, uh, and uh, softness. Uh, so also the difference from Katakali, it was very, everything was, uh, love has to be in a certain way. But uh, everything is very much codified also as far as facial muscle, muscle uh, expression is concerned. But uh, in, in Orissa, is, uh, in Orissa is more, uh, the, the expression are not so uh, rigid in the sense that it's, uh, it's more uh, maybe from the local army, from the, from, from the daily life. From, from the natural uh, way of, uh, of expressing. Although codification is there in mudra and in gesture and everything, you know, but as far as expression is concerned, it's, uh, it's not so um, strictly scientifically like in uh, Katakali, for example. And uh, so, uh, so everything has to be, uh, that's why it is important to learn this uh, dance. Uh, uh, in, the, in the ambience uh, from where it, it originated, because it is connected with the, all the other aspects. And in Urissa, actually, what fascinated me was that when uh, I came, even now, the connection is still there, but when I came even more, 40 years ago, because it was reflected, whatever I was learning in the classroom was a continuation outside the classroom. So what are the people, the way to, to sit, the, the chanting, the, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, everything was the, the, the sculpture which I was seeing, the paintings, the, everything was reflecting with each other. So it was uh, the entire uh, uh, cultural context, the, the entire culture, which, and it was not relegated uh, in a, in a uh, like in, 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 in the West, when you learn classical ballet, and when you come out of the class, there is nothing which connects with that. <laughs> so here, dance was a, still a, a, a continuation of the life of the of people. So, so and, and that was also a capture, because uh, every, everything is it related to something else, and then again, to understand that, you understand, you have to, to, to understand this, and you go, yeah, a large thing, then you start to go deep. So uh, that never ends. So that's why I could never uh, get out of it. <laughs> so I I'm still here. <laughs> Basically. Right. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, for me as a calligrapher, uh, the, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, if I can beg of you <laughs> or, or request you to share something, some movements of the akshara, uh, you know, for me, it's very intimate, the idea of language, the formation, the evolution of a, of a single syllable, how A ah was A ah and Sa was script as a Sa, Re, Ga, or Ka, Kha, Ga, how these evolved, you know. Would you mind sharing 
a bit of the Akshara choreography that you Akshara, do. it's a group production. Uh -huh. so, uh, so it's not a, so, so um, like, uh, no. Then uh, if um, you, you I, I could have, um, I could have sent it to you. <laughs> I see. No, that we can show when we do the photo, uh, you know, uh, oh, yeah. when we'll do the photo uh, journey. Uh, so, of that we can choose oh, more. Yeah, but we are uh, in front of us another. Yes, no, exactly. Uh, you know that. I think uh, um, we can maybe uh, close now with, with the uh, with the, uh, the excerpt. Yes, uh, tell us about what you're gonna dance. Would you mind telling us? Uh, well, uh, this is just one stanza of Sakihe uh, Kesi uh, Matana Mudara. Uh, is the sixth song of the of the Gita Govinda. Uh, just a, a small uh, except in which uh, Radha is saying uh, to to her friend to to go and uh, bring uh, Krishna to her because she's mad of desire for him. And then in her fantasy and her imagination, this is a nice thing because it's like two. Uh, she's talking to her friend. So naturally, the, the song is just saying Nikunja Guruhan Batayanis means uh, in the middle of the night, secret, secretly, I went to meet uh, Krishna there in the heart. But it, uh, when you tell something to your friend, uh, you don't just say, "Oh, I went there and it was uh, night and it was." You uh, decorate the things. So, uh, so she says. Uh, but you know, I uh, before going out of the house, I had to be careful and uh, find out if uh, everybody was sleeping. And then, uh, and then I realized that the, the lamp would have been an obstacle, so I had to switch it off. And then I, made, I realized that my mover was making noise, so I removed them. And uh, finally, when I silently, I realized that everybody was sleeping, so I silently I opened the door and went out. And then. Uh, uh, because this the song said Nikunja Guru Pam Vataya Nisi. So it was silently, secretly at night. So that that uh, hint is there in the poetry. You have to give the um, idea of that uh, it's secretly at night. So before going out, she has also to find out which kind of uh, dress to wear because if it is too uh, bright color, it can, she can be seen. So finally, after choosing the right sari and everything, we were going out. Then it's night, and uh, uh, so suddenly she sees a, a, a shadow, and she says, "I, I, I got the shadow. I, I, I saw a snake uh, crossing my path." And then uh, when I escaped from the snake, one time I got into my sari, so I got so scared. Then I realized, "Oh, my friend's body is only a little." Then some gun uh, got in my feet. So all this uh, to. To make uh, to uh, um, amplify to enlarge the things, then finally she is there and, uh, and uh, Krishna is there and uh, is for her. But it's nice that um, uh, in fact uh, when you talk with a uh, friend and you relate to uh, you you tend to, uh, to 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 tell all the details and to amplify. So you never know if that is actually. The, uh, telling of something which happened, or is just dreaming of it, or is uh, uh, imagining it, or uh, remembering it. So, but this is what she's uh, referring. So, all of this. Yeah, that's fantastic. But uh, as we start, I mean, can dance no. be? <laughs> no. I don't know you to do that anymore. But <laughs> you're very dangerous. <laughs> I know that from here we will go in another, <laughs> open up another universe. <laughs> it's just so. a simple question. It can, uh, to do with Eastern mythology, that can dance be without the idea of mythology? Uh, was that? Uh, but okay. <laughs> yeah, because a, a refuge doesn't have any mythology. Yes. yes. So it can be, of course. It can be. Uh, it depends, uh, but but uh, we have a language, we have an alphabet, and uh, when you have a language, you can talk and uh, whatever you want. So, important has to have a language. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let's hear. Let's, let's <laughs> celebrate the Ashtapadi. <laughs>
क्या बात है वाह 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 एब्सोल्युटली फैंटास्टिक थैंक यू सो मच फॉर शोइंग दैट एब्सोल्युट माय कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स रियली टू यू द काइंड ऑफ आई लुक एट द यू नो द द as you know when i began and i would ask uh, my i would work on a composition like this particular one it spoke of the going of the ego uh, the shedding of but when the ego runs away uh, uh, it went uh, um i'm uh, taking from you hi re ga ma ma ge re sa de ne sa de ho de अहंग जाए सो मोरी अहंग जाए दर्शन पावत है द मोमेंट आई सी द दर्शन ऑफ द परापुर परमेश्वर माई ईगो रन अवे सो बाई लेट सिक्सटीन सेंचुरी ओरिजिनल कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ गुरु अर्जन देव हा मोरी मोरी गंधार इज द आशीर्वाद आशीर्वादात्मक स्वर वे द प्रेयर अकर्स and where the boon the, the uh, revelation is also received sukha is received in the gandhar the the space of the gandhar so there's a discourse so amori aham aham ego jaye jaye mori aham jaye darshan pavat he rajonath hi ट्रीटमेंट <laughs> But then Professor S K Saxena then told me and Dr Subhuti Mutatkar and uh, by uh, Sikandar Singh of Bagdia, by Ashok Singh of Bagdia, so the elders they said no 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 no, don't stop because there's a whole discourse. The tradition of discourse exists uh, in in South Asian uh, cultural traditions, and I see that the way you've attended to it is not just uh, parroting something, uh, mugging up, and uh, but there's a, such a that you under everything that you undergoes uh, um, you know such i mean you handle it so meticulously but a thought process there's a lot of uh, you know a, there's a discourse that you undergo when you tell us about the theme that the way uh, that you choose a theme and then you build out of nothingness so really my compliments and uh, uh, to you uh, for attending to knowledge uh, in the manner that you have done and I, really it is a gift thank you so much actually has been very enriching to interact with you so many uh, <laughs> so many things could come out which uh, i for me were absolutely new and uh, so it increased my my knowledge uh, so i i really enjoyed it so you're only kind <laughs> and i uh, if you want to say something to uh, uh, everybody before we take leave you're welcome to uh, well i would like, i would like to thank all the nice uh, beautiful words which uh, you have read and uh, they 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 told and i would really thank you so much and uh, well this been a very nice uh, meeting uh, in this way and having uh, so much uh, time and space to enlarge uh, our uh, and a little bit of my experience so of course uh, we will meet again and uh, uh, if you if you want to do that visual uh, yes. we will connect we we'll yeah. plan that very soon yeah the moment you put together things and i'll be glad to do the second part that will be uh, episode 148b uh, as i'm in fact tomorrow uh because of uh, some technology uh, there was a blackout in mumbai in my conversation with pandit dhonu mojumdar got uh, you know interrupted at about 3 hours uh, so we continue tomorrow uh the, from last uh, friday or uh, you know uh, saturday actually we did that better or oh, friday so i do that tomorrow tomorrow we have that yes yeah
Now today we are lucky that uh, internet. Yeah, it's been yeah, it's been little sluggish, but it didn't break. Yeah, we've been lucky. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> I know. And then with Ustad Sabir Khan of the Farokhabad, the Khalifa of the Farokhabad the Gharana, that got interrupted because of the internet issues the other day. So we do that on Friday on the 23rd. So we do these uh, part twos and threes of our betaks. It'll be my pleasure to, to host uh, the, the second part where we can share uh, uh, some of your other work and the journey, of course. Uh, thank you so much, Eliana, for taking time out the way you did. It means thank a lot, yeah. Namaskar. <laughs> um, so, friends, that was my conversation with Dr. Eliana Chitaristi, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Huh? And uh, time for me. Um, and thank you, really, for uh, sharing your thoughts, your comments, and so on and so forth. Um, and time for me to share what we are up to tomorrow. As I was mentioning to uh, uh, Ileana, that uh, my conversation with Pandit uh, Ronu Mojumdar uh, continues tomorrow, uh, uh, Tuesday, that is October 20th, 5 p.m. onwards. I will continue my conversation with him. It was uh, just fantastic, uh, the interaction that I had with him the other day. We spoke of rag forms and, you know, composition structures uh, and so on and so forth. And he's just a fantastic, fantastic musician. And I hope that you will take time out, reserve, uh, mark your calendar. Tomorrow at about 5 p.m. Uh, we will, uh, you know, be in session uh, with him. Day after tomorrow, uh, uh, I'll be in conversation. You, you remember that I have started a... Uh, you know, started my conversations with accordionists, um, and it's an instrument which you know uh, I've I've been fond of since since long. Uh, I've never played it, but I've enjoyed listening to it. Then I stopped listening because nobody was playing it anymore. Uh, my uncle, Sadar uh, Gyan Singh Sokhi, used to be very good. You know, nobody came to get their accordions repaired. Uh, everything went electronic and people forgot the idea of uh, even Roland. I mean, many companies make electronic accordions, they blend of both. But the actual acoustic, or if I can call it, yeah, acoustic is a wind instrument, uh, aerophone, and it somehow died. Um, I was looking at uh, one of the recordings somebody sent me of uh, uh, violinist Uttam Singh uh, marking R.D. Berman's, uh, you know, anniversary in Kolkata. And uh, there was one gentleman playing uh, an accordion. It was a Horner uh, Bake. We used to all have those mouth organs. I'm, I'll have uh, one or two lying here as well. Uh, but, you know, so I'm curious now. I'm going to check with who plays in Mumbai, the film industry, or in, uh, in, in Kolkata, or in, uh, in Chennai uh, with the film industry if there are still accordion players. I would love to interact with them of what uh, the tradition of accordion playing has been or still is in India. And uh, Lahore has been another important film uh, place, uh, cultural space for ages. Uh, before Kolkata, Delhi and others were born, Lahore was there already. So I, I would be interested in seeing if there are accordion players. I'll maybe check with Ustad Tafu Khan, who's an outstanding harmonium player himself, one of the great uh, tabla legend, legendary living legends amongst us. Um, so my conversation, um, I've, I've uh, interacted with uh, uh, Professor Giorgio Della Role, who plays the, uh, the keyboard, uh, the piano accordion. Uh, on Saturday, I was in conversation with uh, Professor Alexander Selivanov of Moscow from the Genesis uh, Academy. He plays the uh, button accordion. And on um, Wednesday, uh, which is uh, 21st of uh, uh, October, uh, I'll be in conversation with uh, Maestro Francesco Bruno, who's a bandionist, bandionist uh, or plays the bandion, uh, which is the, and he plays tango uh, music. You, you, uh, those of you familiar with the uh, tango uh, music, the dance and all that, so this is the bandonian, the same family, but it's like a snail, you know, right and left. And we'll have this interaction uh, or conversation with Francesco Bruno at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, which is uh, 3 p.m. Italia, 
so I hope you've marked your calendars and I'll share the rest of the program. As I mentioned already, I've, I've not yet done Ustad Sabir Khan's second poster as I've done of uh, Ronu by, uh, for tomorrow. But we'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. when I'll be in conversation with Pandit Ronu Mojumdan. Thank you again for joining. Lots of love to you all. Enjoy your dinner and have a good sleep. Do not forget to laugh some, shed a tear or two some of joy. Sorrow isn't bad either. Khuda hafiz, namaskar, vayaguji ka khalsa vayaguji ka prate, a very good night, bonanotte Italia, satkartal.